Hello and welcome to Zarin Tech's expert training on SAP ABAP programming. In this course from Zarin Tech, you will learn how to effectively develop applications and enhance processes in SAP using ABAP. We will guide you through ABAP syntax, data types, interfaces and scripting best practices. You'll understand how to leverage features like classes, methods, exception handling, and modularization techniques to efficiently code in ABAP. By the course end, you'll be able to quickly prototype and build custom SAP solutions. You'll know how to interface ABAP with databases and external systems. We cover real-world examples to apply debugging, error handling, and testing techniques that ensure seamless SAP integrations. But before we begin, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to receive regular updates from us. Now let us take a look at the agenda, agenda one. What is ERPs 2? Introduction to SAP 3. History of SAP 4. What is SAP 5? SAP solutions 6. Technical overview of SAP system 7. Architecture 8. SAP system landscape 9. Developing a simple ABAP PP program. 10. Introducing RBP syntax. 11. Implementing a simple dialogue. 12. Customizing the ABAP editor. 13. Database tables. 14. Coding and debugging in ABAP. 15. Control flow structures in ABAP. Let's dive into the video now. So as said in this session, we'll know what is SAP ABAP. So before directly jumping into ABAP, we should firstly understand what is SAP and where from this ABAP came in. So that's why today's session will start with getting started with SAP. So we'll understand what is SAP and how ABAP is used in SAP and how it has been introduced into SAP. So we have a disclaimer for our presentation. So this presentation, including the examples, images, and references are provided for information purpose only. Compiling with all applicable copyright laws is the responsibility of the user. So without limiting the rights under copyright, no part of this document will be reproduced, stored, or introduced into any retrieval system or transmitted into any form by any means. The credits that were taken for the images and the content from the open source will not be and cannot be used for promotional activities. So whatever has been used in the slides will be given complete copyrights and it will be under the rules. So because we have used this information only for understanding it. Getting started with ERP. To define ERP, ERP actually stands for Enterprise Resource Planning. So ERP is basically the software which helps us to build our organization, which belongs to different industries as well. So as we have said, it has so many things like supply chain, which has been given as an example. So see, so this is what we have mentioned it here. So we have supply chain management. We also have finance. Then we have big data analytics. All these, all these are part of ERP itself. So that means for all the business processes that are required to run a company. So every company would not need the same processes. Every company would need different business processes based on their need, like human resource management. This is like mandatory now everywhere. Service management, and if you have the project management, manufacturing, all these would be part of ERP. So what ERP will do is like ERP will efficiently manage these process in one integrated system. So for that, we can use as said SAP or many other softwares too. So but we'll majorly concentrate on SAP because we are learning about ABAP. Even now the SAP has been developed onto artificial intelligence and machine learning. So under ERP now you could also see Internet of Things. So that's where we can see that ERP would come in picture. So what people also call this ERP as is, you know, they call it as a central nervous system of an enterprise. I guess with this picture, we can even understand why do they call it right because everything is related to ERP so from there you can understand what is happening in each system what is happening in each process and you can integrate them and you can work on them so uh, getting more into it so if we ever want to start some clothing store okay some brand which you want to name it as and uh, 
do you already see why ERP would be required over there? Just think, just think maybe you're starting some of the brands, pick Zara or pick your favorite brand, anything, any clothing brand. So do you already see what is required for it to run the business? If we take an example and if we understand, we'll also get it perfect. So, uh, so we can use it in our business in any way. So as I said, if it's a clothing business, what do we first do? We need to get the raw materials first. So we have to have our raw materials in place and we have to store them. That is asset management. So even that is required. So after you store them, you have to process them. You have to manufacture them. You have to sell them. So there are so many things that are involving here. There is a finance. You have to calculate how much raw material you're getting, how much does it cost, how much the stitching cost, how much the transport cost, how much the you know, production, then uh, restoring it, all this. So everything comes under ERP itself. So if you have an ERP system, you can manage all this easily. If not, if you're having different, different thing, you're having everything in the books, it's not really easy to understand, right? Like you have to refer so many things, you will not understand where it is going, how it is coming. It will be complicated. So I can see to make our lives easier, ERP came in bringing all this together and adding everything under one umbrella saying like, everything can be saved here. And from here, you can understand how the relation goes. So that's how this ERP helps. Like finance requires ERP to quickly close the books. Sales would need ERP to manage all the customer orders. Logistic will rely on well running of this ERP software to deliver right products and right services to customer on time. Like suppose you purchase something from Mintra and suppose you're not satisfied or if you have something or if you want to return or if you have a concern, what do we do? We reach customer service and they would help us in returning the product or you know if you want to exchange exchange the product everything so there we are giving them service so there comes in the service management and we are also just discussed that we will sell the products so that's where the sales marketing comes in so this management actually needs that instant visibility into company's performance to make timely decisions. And also, if you want someone to invest onto your business, or if you want some banks to give you loans, so they also need the accurate records, right? So if we have everything already in place here, then isn't it easy for them to understand the banks and shareholders who need this accurate financial records so that they can have the reliable data and even the analysis becomes easier. So that's where the big data analytics comes from how your business is, what is the future of your business, where you're missing. So you're having literally everything at one place. So that's where it becomes more easier. So the ERP software in the market has already reached, I guess, something around 78 billion. So this is what their assumption is by 2026. So why? Because that's how the businesses are going. That's how people are getting onto ERPs. So um, I would also like to explain a few modules of this ERP instead of just showing it. So looking at this picture, we can identify like it's a cycle, right? It's a cycle like the processes are a cycle. So you will not stop anything just with one product. Uh, pick up anything like I have picked clothes. Do you any of you want to pick any product or any business and we can discuss on the same topic. We can understand how this works. Anything, automobiles or anything, anyone interested on in any particular business or anything? Okay, should I still wait? Okay, uh, shall I take Royal Enfield? Good example, right? Yes. So let's take Royal Enfield. We all know it takes too much time for Royal Enfield to deliver also, right? Like if you order now, when do you get it? You'll get it after six months. We don't know because they take care of it very much like they do it with hands. This is what I have heard because I don't have it, but I also like it. So Royal Enfield also involves this process. So how it becomes easier for them if they have this ERP installed. So that's what we will know here. So where it starts, it starts with engineering, right? So firstly, they have to define how the bike should look like, 
how the royal enfield should look like what are the parts that is required what all are required to assemble it so there are different models basically you could have ordered one say maybe you have ordered thunderbird or himalayan or some version of royal enfield so they already have the blueprint of it they already know how it goes so the engineering part is already done so once you place the order they would need the materials for it so make it the tires make it the mud guard make it the lights whatever make it the machine so that's the important part the engine so everything so they need to procure those materials so and then the manufacturing starts so afterwards they'll be distributed it so you are knowing about some royal and new product means it's because they're marketing the product well so after that's where you get to know about it so they'll market about it they'll have it as an example once you purchase they will have it in place they will quote a value for that so that's the finance and then you place the order and you're getting it that's where the sales come in all this process is going good fine but who is there to take care of this who is there to have the employees we also need employees everywhere so that's where this human resources comes in picture so if you want to understand better about this the, the human resources way why would we need them to maintain a complete employee database and to optimally utilize all the employees so we want to know where they come from how we use them all those right so that's where the human resources comes in so sales so as we said the implementing the order which we have given so as we have said say someone has ordered thunderbird so then the order placement has to be done when are we giving the order scheduling of the order so when are we getting the order shipping of the order and we have to create an invoice to the customer so that's where even the sales comes in so and also production how the marketing how the production happens we have to plan it we have to optimize it that's when we have to manufacture it and then we will distribute it so what is getting material so we have to procure it so we need to do the cost saving with the support of end to end procurement and logistic process so it's not just that okay i got this products for this price i'm selling it for this price no you have to keep in mind that if i keep it what price the customers would buy and if i keep it what price i would get the benefits so all these should be intact that's when the product will be delivered in good phase and it will be a success so for this to run it smoothly we will be having this cycle which explains us like what the flow is how the flow is and what all can be done so we have talked about erp so far and what are the software packages that use this erp as a solution so we, here we could say that there are so many companies that are using erp as their software like sap people soft oracle cybel microdynamics all these so all these are different companies that providing solutions for erp because erp is not a, just a single product so there are so many erp manufacturers so let's not concentrate on all let's take three one these three and we'll highlight on these three majorly will be working on sap but what other companies are also providing let's just see what they can provide so these are the top three erp solutions that are in market now so we already know that the market leader is erp with sap so sap is leading with erp as its software so what does sap provide is like it provides SAP ERP, SAP Business All in One, or SAP Business One, you know, which can be used for small, mid size, and large size enterprises. It depends on what kind of business yours is. So everyone doesn't need the same solution. The small cap would need a better, simple solution. The large cap would need a large processing system which has more memory which has more database which has more processes also so based on the size of the company the sap can provide different softwares to them as well you know that helps them to run their businesses better okay and the next one here we have is oracle so that is mostly known as it is relational database but it also manufactures different erp products like we have oracle financials so we also have jd enterprise uh, in 
yeah, JAT Edwards Enterprise One. So that's one thing. So which belongs to Oracle itself. And we could also see Microsoft is also there. So it also has its own product and they named it as Microdynamics. So even Microdynamics provides solutions for different like small, mid and large. But today in this course, in our course, we'll only focus on the market leader supplier, only SAP and its solutions. So, so that's where I want to introduce about SAP to you all. Okay, so to understand SAP, let's have a brief history of SAP. So we just see what ERP means. So SAP is a huge ERP software. In, so SAP is basically based out of Germany, Waldorf. So these help the companies to invite, innovate and then also, you know, to group in software solution and all this. So firstly, it would be good for us to understand what is history of SAP. SAP has already completed 49 years and, uh, you know, with 2022, it will be completing 50 years because SAP has started its company in 1972. So, you know, the, those people or the previous IBM employees who started this SAP in 1972. So these five employees came out of IBM. They felt like something is required to integrate all the ERP solutions onto one platform. So where we can provide, you know, the database to them, the server to them, the UI to them. And that's when this has been introduced. And from then till now, it has evolved so much and it has, you know, leading the market like a pro now. So to firstly start with, you know, we have heard that the IBM was founded by uh, the IBM employees and also as uh, one of our students just said, like, what does it mean? So it also, they initially called it as system analysis and program development and later they call it as SAP. So the main motive of them was they want to build a software for real time data processing and then that can renewalize the business as well. And later in the next year, they completed their financial accounting systems, which is the first system of SAP R1 architecture. So that's why we call it as SAP R1. So it has started it in 1972 and in 1973, they named it as SAP R1. So it has kept evolving and it keep on, it still keeps on evolving. So later, you could also see that in 1979, we got it as SAP R2 system. So here we could also see that a BAP has been introduced onto it. That's the language which we'll be learning shortly in our sessions. So after SAP R2, it went on to SAP R3. Even the customers kept on increasing. You know, initially SAP only started with 40 customers and later it increased to thousands and thousands and thousands. So after introducing R2 in 1992, they evolved it onto SAP R3 architecture. So where we still work on SAP R3 architecture. So that's the three tier architecture which we will learn in further sessions so after this r3 architecture they have also introduced in between called my sap and then they came on to sap erp in 2005 so this sap business one and this sap erp all these are in use so we have we haven't in included it here, but in 2010, they have this SAP Business One. And in 2016, they have introduced SAP S4 HANA. So that's basically based on database, which is now being used extensively. So, you know, this has been already introduced in uh, 180 plus countries. And now it is working on SAP HANA updates and also it has further security patches. So as said, it keeps and keeps and keeps evolving all the time. So here we could see that along with ABAP, they have also integrated Java. But then the point that we should not forget is ABAP is always part of SAP. So that's like the soul of SAP where it started with the language, where the coding, everything happens, where the statements, where all your coding lines goes. What we, That is what we'll be learning in some time and in our future sessions as well. So we could see that that always stays with SAP, it's always there with, with SAP. So to, to learn anything 
like if you want to learn further if you want to learn on hana also first thing we have to learn and we have to understand is abap so yeah so here we could see like as said in 2016 it's business all in one and then business suit this is sap hana which has been awarded as sap s4 hana so this covers a simple history of what sap came from and what sap is at now so as said yeah it is having more than 40 years of experience i would say it's not just more than 40 as said 2022 it is going to be 50 so sap will be celebrating its golden year also so we could see like it has been uh sap is across 130 countries now which is having more than 27k of employees and as said the customers are almost 293 plus in 190 countries because only with s4 hana itself we got the customers of 180 plus countries so overall it is more than 190 countries we have seen the history of sap this is what the history of sap is now i want you to understand what is sap we heard about erp now we learned about briefly about erp maybe not complete but we got a better picture on erp i believe so is sap only erp if someone asks you this question then no sap is not just erp there is much more for sap so as said we just said like there will be different solutions for sap that is giving to its customers right based on uh, the customers whereas whether it is small cap or mid cap or large cap based on that will be providing the solutions to the customers so for for now let's consider erp solution okay in that we have three segments so the concentrate on all these right so the business one this is for small cap business entrepreneurs and the mid sized is for large entrepreneurs which provides the end to end solution with business suit like we'll also have this upgradation plans like so sometimes companies do upgrade from one process to other process as well so we were just checking whether sap is just erp or not so no sap is not just erp so what is there what do we have more than sr erp so that we will see so but always the core of sap is erp but sap also have invested in so many other technologies such as around erp analytical solutions we have in memory computing then cloud computing enterprise mobility and much much more solutions because all this would help the business to run easily that helps them to make a right decision with everything and evolving with the generations moving forward the business also has to work in the same manner with so many innovations and so many things we also need to concentrate in the similar manner so we have to keep up with the phase of the growth sap also has to take forward and take further steps on what it has to do how it has to do what has to be done so this is the slogan of sap you can say you have to run your business better with all this being involved so they help the businesses to run better and that's how sap has become the market leader see here we could see it's not just integrating erp solutions so it is having many other solutions also basically it depends on which solution your business need what solution your business need and how sap can help you in running that business efficiently so that's when we'll be speaking about sap solutions so apart from erp i also want to show you what or different solutions you are having so the your for example few solutions that has been added on to the screen like you could already see sap erp here sap is for hana sap fury that is the ui application sap vivo dashboard so this is also more most extensively used the vivo dashboards the vivo explorer so many so many are there sap crm sap srm sap bw all these 
So understand, learning too much about these solutions would confuse us. So let's not dig too much onto these solutions. Among these are the popularly used SAP solutions. You know, the SAP business one, which I have been explaining, which is used in small scale, SAP ERP, HANA, Bivo Analytics, all this, just for example. Okay, so how does business suit suits? What is SAP Warehouse? What is SAP NetFlivo flat for? So why this basically used is like, this is where our solutions comes in picture. All the different solutions which we have, this is where it comes in picture. So SAP introduced this NetWeaver platform in 2004 and it has integrated the different SAP and non-SAP applications also because the server is um, a runtime environment. So they can say that the technical foundation for many SAP applications. So on top of it, we have this unified platforms having this business warehouse as well so this business suits and business warehouse are the common ones so business suit is for automating the core business processes this is used for automating the core business processes in real time cost and time efficient manner so that's where it makes the business more successful and also um, Let's first see what this SAP business suit means. It's an integrated solution package. So that means you can have multiple solutions integrated onto your software based on your business. So sometimes you would need more than one solution for your business. So this SAP business suit, this is where you can have multiple solutions, which is being basically used in large scale units. So it's already an ERP application. So it also has other applications. What does this mean? Supply and relationship management, the customer management. What is the life cycle of the product? Then supply chain management. That's the first thing we have been discussed when we started with ERP, right? So it's again segregated into these. So all those different solutions can be introduced onto business suit. So um, let's not dig deeper. Dig too, dig too much onto this, so that would be confusing. So this is the major one which we have already concentrated on. So let's see what ARP has. So the SAP ARP also holds the same solutions which we have seen for ERP. So it helps in collecting the quality data, then controlling, tracking, measuring, and automating all the core processes that starts from financials, investments, sales and warehouses, production, human resources, and everything, the cash management. You know, with everything, all things placed at one place, the quality and efficiency of their business is, is being improved. So all this has SAP specific module names specified. So to support all these activities, so SAP has introduced wide range of groups or functions. No, these we generally call them as modules in SAP. You know, so let's see what all modules we have. We have plant maintenance. So wherever you are manufacturing your product, you have to maintain that particular plant. So that has to be done. Human resource management, we call it as SAP HRM. So SAP, why do we need SAP HRM? So you have to manage your resources. So everything has its own module, you know, so that you can go into that particular module, see what it is and understand what it is. So these will be basically used in each business. So there are many chances that they would not skip these modules. So SAP MM, SAP material management, financial supply chain, production and planning, PP, SD. So we generally call them as, you know, SD module, MM module, PP module. So we have the functional team who will dig deep dive onto these functional modules. They will learn about these modules. So if I say too much about transaction codes and all, you, there are chances that you would get confused. So what are these transaction codes and all are? So once you see your SAP system, you'll understand that, you know, you can type something, enter something and see some transactions, some screens over there. So each of these modules has 
code that has been already integrated. So there are steps that has been integrated. It's just that you enter some data and you will have some process. You will make some enhancements onto that data and you will see how the data look like, how the data is already being saved and all these. So uh, talking about that, um, I would also like to take you through this SAP systems. You know, what kind of SAP systems we have? We just said like three tier architecture, right? So let's see what is a three tier architecture. So taking this into consideration, this is how the three tier architecture looks like. Starting with the presentation layer, the next one is application layer, and then is the database layer. So we call this as three tier client or server architecture that most of SAP is using and is network based system flows. So this, this is how the system flows in SAP. Okay, so considering the first one, which is the presentation layer, presentation server, we also call it as the client server. What is presentation server? To tell you whatever you're seeing on your screen, whatever I'm showing you, this is a presentation layer. That's what you're presenting. That's what you're showing. But back of this, there is so much of code, right? How this PowerPoint works, how this Zoom works, this is all what you can only see. So behind this, there is so many things that has been developed and that has been done. So presentation layer means it's an user interaction layer. So for SAP, like how we are using this, how I am using this PPT to explain this to you, SAP also has its own GUI, which we were asking in the starting when we'll get the access and all where in some time uh, Nishant will be joining us and helping us in adding it, which we call it as SAP GUI. What GUI means is graphical user interface. And where you can see all these screens means you can see it on your desktop, you can see it on your mobile devices, laptops, on iPads, everything. So this presentation layer, you just need the access. Having the right access will make you, will enable you to see. And what other activities can be done on this presentation layer is like system administrators. You know what an admin means. He'll be having access to everything. So the system administrators will have access to all these layers. Whereas we as ABAP developers will also work on backend of this presentation layer. So we work, we code on the backend. That's where we help them to see the screen. So that's help them to see what they are seeing right now. And also the business users. I was just describing about these modules in our in the previous slide, right? So whoever wants to use that, they will use this presentation layer. So they will have the GUI screens. If you give them a different application, then you will see that particular application and you can see on that application. It depends on how they need and that's how we would see. So that's where the presentation layer, all these people will be working on. And what is there on application layer? So the second is basically the application layer. So this is the middle part, if you see, you know. So there, it's not necessary that we have one application server. We can have more than one also. So this stays as heart of SAP because this is where the solutions are being installed, whether it is SAP ERP, whether it is SAP business suit, whatever, whatever is required for this business suit or business one or business all in one, what all are required, those softwares will be installed in the application layer. In our next sessions, we'll also see that we'll get some data from this application layer if they upload something. All this will also happen. So this is where the applications programs are executed and the business functionalities are executed. Like, you know, if you want to post some document or if you want to create some purchase order, all this have to be saved. So this server is actually working as a communicator between the presentation layer, which we have seen before, and the database layer about which we'll know in our next session, okay? So this application server is where the dispatcher would distribute the workload to different processes that makes the job easier. So that last but not the least, the database layer. So the database layer is most important because whatever you are doing, you have to save it. If you don't have the data saved, what's the purpose of doing all this? So the 
the bottom of this architecture is the database layer and the database mainly aims in storing the data what you have saved like the finance the MMPP, SD, all these, all these modules. So all the data whichever you have created will be saved here. And not everyone will have access to this database layer. Only system administrator will have a direct access. We will have an access to get the data, to save the data, all these access, but not directly onto database. Or we have so many other databases also, right? Like MS SQL, Oracle, SAP is now even having S4 HANA as a database. So all these are the different databases that will be used. Uh, so this is the data architecture. It's not that we will be working on this, but it's good to understand how the flow goes. Though we work on the presentation layer and all, we'll be fetching the data still from database layers. I would tell you one point here, if you're already a aware of fetching the data from databases, all this, and it will help you in learning ABAP quick, because in ABAP we use this SQL statements as well. So that's a part of our ABAP where we understand about these tables and all. Um, not today, but slowly we'll be understanding about maybe in the next early sessions itself, you will see what those tables on ABAP look like. So uh, to understand why should we split this? Why do we really need to split all this into three? Why not one? So I have highlighted three points here. That is the flexibility, the security, and for the performance. So why? Because this helps us in giving a bit of flexibility because we can modify data at different layers easily. If everything is integrated, if everything is like at one place, wouldn't it be too clumsy? So having it at these levels would help us to modify that particular data at that particular layer. Take an example. So SAP GUI systems has versions. So if you want to affect the GUI in a presentation layer, so that actually should not affect the existing application and database, right? The database we are not changing. The application also we are not changing. We're only getting a new updated version of your screen. So why should you touch application and database? So doesn't it already help in splitting those two and only updating the first one? So obviously it helps as in providing a better performance and isn't it flexible already? And or the other point is security. We don't want everyone to touch the application server or database server. We don't want to give access because it's not that everyone of us would understand what it works at the application level or what it works at the database level. Being a developer, I would know what happens on a BAP level, but I will not know what happens on a system or building a system. So if you have split it, isn't it? more secure so that I will not ruin anything on the system unknowingly or knowingly. So the security will also there be more efficient. So separating them and really enables us in having, you know, better performance because different tasks and different processes will be shared among these different layers and by different users and different developers. So each will be done separately. So after this, we just got to know what SAP architecture look like. And I want to tell a small thing on what our SAP systems and what landscapes do we have. So we have these landscapes, three landscapes. The development landscape is where we develop our code. We do the enhancements, we do the coding, we create the products, we create the objects so we can not directly push it onto production saying like, okay, development is done. We always need to test it, right? So that's where initially it goes to quality and test landscape. This is where they do all the tests, all the quality check, they will report the bugs, we will be fixing them. And that's when it goes to production for the real time usage. So this is how it would be done. So, so that it would be easy for them to understand and develop a product queue system if we have the test system in between and if we are not touching the production system because while we are changing the existing code during development 
the application will not work as expected because you are editing it. So that's when that's why it's really required for us to split it into different landscapes and have different applications like this. So different landscape like this, not basically different application, same application onto different landscapes. So the same thing has been mentioned here. What do we do here? So they'll maintain obviously companies who are using sap will having more than one system they'll call it development test and uh, production as said so for quality assurance they'll have the system for development and all so uh, considering this what will be done so in production they are using some activity and they say like okay i want another field i'm introducing a vendor onto my uh, business i don't have a vendor till now so i want to introduce vendor so the production is not having vendor you have to introduce this you can't directly go to production and add it so you'll come to development system whichever will be provided to you you'll make your changes so you will be having something called transport releasing transports so that means how will this go from development to quality that is via transport so from development it will go to quality that's where the quality expert sits and checks like whether the requirement has been achieved whether it has been done asset and from then it moves to production system so this is how it moves from development to production system so that's where you know we can have the development we developers will work on development we also do the unit testing everything here then once it goes to quality we will check whether it is as per the quality or not then we'll have the quality analyst who do the testing finally it goes to production so if any bug any issue any enhancement comes from production always come and do in the development system so only if it is a green from quality then only it goes to production so with this, I guess we have covered about what is SAP, what is the SAP solution, how the three-tier architecture looks, and what are the systems of SAP. So uh, how we are SQL using how, I mean, how SQL queries are used in ABAP is like, ABAP has its set of statements. So it will be easier to know SQL statements we would be having some modifications in the statement. So we'll have something called SAP uh, ABAP editor. So that's where you write all your code, you save it. So once you save it, it will save it in SAP systems. So it will ask you for something called transport request. Yes, it does have some transaction too. So what all developments you are doing. So you will not save it in local. For testing purpose, we'll do it in local to know how it works. So we have, uh, you'll understand once I show the screen, I'm just explaining you, you know, on air, this would be, but you will get the thin line, how it gets transported. So whatever you save on this transport request, so whatever development you have done, so that will be saved in it. So it will be like step of your object. Suppose think like you have developed two objects. So one is a report saying like, okay, uh, I want to run something. I want to display hello world program. So you will do it in development system. You will write your code, you will save it, you will activate it, you will add it to the transport request, whichever I'm just mentioning now. So this transport request will have something called releasing it. So releasing the transport request means we will not manually do any other activity afterwards until and unless it is, you know, very required so we have a system administrator and sap basis team if we want support that will be helping us to move this transport from development to quality but basically we have also automated this process once the system is provided to the customer so what will be done there was like after adding it to the transport transport is again think like um, it is having some name okay some name under table you have elements right similarly the transport request will be there under it you'll have these elements whichever you have done once you release it it understands that it should then go to quality assist so it's not like we move them with some code we'll just release them and then it goes and sits in quality in the time period that has been set for that customer so few customers would say like once it is released i would need it in 15 minutes it depends on the system and the time it takes to import those many objects so some would say i needed it half now some would say i would need it only at the end of the day so if you want it to be moved immediately then we would raise a request saying like see basis team i have some development done and i want to 
transport this immediately. So they will fetch that from the back end, from the application layer, and then they'll move it to this quality test. So whatever objects will be collected here and then will be transported. So understanding this is also important for our development. So even that I'll be showing you in my further sessions, how the TR looks like, what happens when it is released and all those steps. So from here, it will be moved to quality and you will not move from quality to production. So once it reaches the quality, so there will be certain tasks, there will be certain jobs that will be executed on weekly, daily or as per their requirement nowhere to production and it goes daily so it will be mostly bi-weekly or something until and unless the production the customer needs it immediately so through a patchwork the basis people will come and will release and they will move it if it's a patchwork but if it's a daily transport it will have certain jobs which were already existing in that way they'll be moved from development to quality quality to production it depends on what the customer needs. So what SAP do is like, it will say like, I'll be using different kinds of database. What database do you use? It's not that every customer is using HANA. No, not that every customer is already onto HANA. Few are, yes. The remaining was still on Oracle database, MySQL database, there are so many other databases. So it depends on the requirement of the customer. Yeah, so ABAP is actually not a complicated language, I would say. So we'll see it and what it is and uh, how it works. So we'll start with the basics of our ABAP programming. So this is the definition of it. Advanced Business Application Programming. So uh, to understand about ABAP, let's just know that it's the programming language that has been created by a CP for the development of the application programs. So we as a CP developer use this language to build the transactions that were being used in SAP R3 applications, that is the three tier applications. And even the SAP customers would need this ABAP to add the business additional business functionalities basically to them. Like if they want to customize a screen in some example, we thought like maybe what if they got a new field? What if they want that field to be enabled in all that cases. So that enhancement will also be done on this web applications. So how can it be easier for us to learn the web? It's better to write the code first. So if we directly start writing the code, wouldn't it be more easier for us? Wouldn't it make our lives more simpler? Because rather than studying about it and understanding about it. So let's, let's start with writing some code, but I'll firstly show you some screens on how the screens look like, where we'll write the code, all those. So we, with that, it will be more easier. And then we will open our systems when the systems will be installed, once our other trainer Nishan joins us and shows us. So we call the workbench or wherever you make the changes, we call it as ABAP editor and the ABAP editor. So every transaction, every change you make in ABAP, you will enter a transaction. The code looks like this. So it's like SE38. These are all standard codes. Sometimes you will also create these codes for your enhancements. Even that we'll see later. So using this code, we'll first enter into ABAP screen. So for us to create and run this program what all we should know is like we should know how we can create a program and we'll also know how we can work with that editor and uh, what are all the editor functions what other functions we have on it and how to write the correct statement onto ABAP. so these are the basic things that we will learn so firstly we are going with a report so this is how the screen looks like. So when you open, you will not even have this. These remind same, you know, on top you can see, I'll have, yeah. So here you could see, right? This is where we enter the transaction code, whichever I have just said, SE38. So once you click on SE38 and enter, this, this is how the screen appears for you. So this is the screen, which we call it as ABAP editor. So this is where we call these programs as the reports, okay? Reports is where you write your code and on execution of that report, you will get an output as desired. Uh, 
suppose if we want to do an addition, if we want to write A plus B gives C, so A is 5, B is 4, what is the output? So you want to, you can see all the data on execution of the report. So doing that activities, writing A plus B, that means if you have two variables and if you want to add those, that code will be written in this program, in this report. So in this, uh, I also have to mention one more point. So whichever word pre-existing will have a normal naming convention, you can, the SAP ones will start with SA, any alphabets, but the customer specific programs which we have to create will either start with Z or Y. Sometimes the customer will also give a namespace. Why do they do that is like if you generically give Z. So if you have two to three customers, then how will you identify? Suppose take that you have three customers, one from Intra, one from Royal Enfield and one from something else. So suppose somehow they are using the same system or even the Mintra and some clothing brand is using the same system, then how will they identify this belongs to them, this belongs to them? Basically, the different customers will not have same systems. That's a point we have to note. Every customer will take their own system because of data privacy, right? But to identify, they will have the namespace. So they will tell like, I am creating this namespace. You can start with this namespace like Z, uh, backslash or forward slash they'll give and they'll say like um, Mintra and then they will you can give your report name whatever the activity it does so naming conventions or other important thing so here in this uh, this is the book name which has this ABAP so that's why they have taken that as an example so this is where it has been added first program so every time you write something ensure that you are giving and a reliable name. You can't write the complete definition what report does, but something, suppose, uh, think that you are getting some data, then you have to write it like fetch uh, finance. So that means fetch finance data. So it has a restriction of some 30 characters. So you have to give within that characters. Once you enter the data, so here you could see three buttons, right? One is create, one is display and one is change. If it's an existing program, you can either display or change. I was telling you about this development quality and production, right? You will have change and create access only in development. In quality or in production, you can only see it. So that's why this display is for. So you can either see the program and sometimes the program belongs to some other package or some other user and you will not be able to edit it maybe we have that restriction. In that case also, we'll be able to only say it. So once you create, sorry, once you create this program and once you click on create, this is how the next pop-up looks like. We will have a practice in another, uh, you know, half an hour and an hour. So then we'll create one of the programs. So you'll also have a hands-on. Don't get worried over there. I, I'm just explaining what it looks like and what it has. So when you create this new program, so you have some important attributes that we need to give to the program. Suppose, uh, take this my program is the naming which you have given. What is your my program? It's my first ABAP program. So if you want to give a better title to understand better about this, this is where you give the title. It has also length restriction. I don't remember the character length exactly. Uh, we can check on it. So this, this is where we'll give the understanding meaningful description it's just like a description so all these are by default given so the original language where you were developing and whoever clicks on create their user id be given like this by default okay so uh here the type whether your program is an executable program or whether it is already part of a different program, whether it is a test program, all these kinds of details will be given under the type. So uh, we'll firstly concentrate on executable programs and we'll only do executable programs. Why? Because whatever you have to do, it has to be executed. If not remaining, we can do based on the requirement. It's really not necessary all the time to have it. So like executable programs, test programs, all this. And we could also see the status of this, then the application, where it belongs, it, if it has some authorizations, all these details. So if you, you can see various details here, these all we will be filling based on the program. Yeah. 
So after this, okay, there is one more screen which was actually um, not added, but that we'll see while we practice. Okay, so if we save it as a local, it will not ask us for package. But if you want to save it in what a package means basically is like all your objects, you can't randomly keep everything over there. Take an example. Suppose you have your pictures. So if you want to save it on your desktop, don't we all create a folder, name it like birthday or some celebration and add it everything in that folder. Similar manner in a bar also we will add them. And as one of our colleagues has asked like how we can send it. So once we keep it in that package, it will be easier for us to add the package to the transport so that you can transport all those objects at a time. So that transport request and all I will show you later while we practice that particular session. So generally, if you were doing any real time, we will only go for package. If not, then we will have local if you want to practice or if you want to test or if you want to do anything, then we will go for practice. So we have to write a correct syntax. So initially, once you create and come to the screen, this is how the screen look, looks like. So the report, it will have these words by default. It will show like report and it will have a report name. And then if you see something here, it is showing it as inactive, right? So the status of it will always be inactive and you can activate it once you write the particular code. So and if you want to see like what do we write here and how it looks. So this is how we will start writing writing our hello world code. So here you could see something that are highlighted in blue, right? These we call it as keywords. So what this means is like these are mentioning the program what it has to do. So that means write means it is saying to the program, right? Write this particular part. So whatever you give in the single quotes, we call it as hard code. Generally, we'll write it into a different you know, variable and we'll add it. But for understanding, firstly, we should know how it works. Whatever you have written here, it will be as is be displayed on your output screen. So write statement, you should give a space. And while ending the statement, it's always necessary to end it with a period. We call this full stop as a period. So this is how we write the first basic ABAP statements. So ABAP has individual statements. So every line of code is different. So each line will have, you know, every activity you have to do, write, save, everything, whatever you want to write, you have it as you will be having it as an individual statement. As said, the highlighted one, the blue one, where you see what it does, we call it as ABAP keyword. And if the statement has to be ended, that means you're stopping the statement before going to next statement, you have to end it with a full stop. And there should be always a space between the words. There is one more point. There is a, no restriction between lower case and higher or you know, upward or lower cases. So here you can give this anything in upper or lower letter. That's fine. It doesn't identify. So lower and upper case doesn't bother you. But here, whatever you have written, it will be considering only in that manner. If you're giving upper case, it will show you upper. If you're giving lower case, it will give you a lower case. But if a statement is like this, it is not case sensitive, basically. Yeah, so we do have this, you know, to beautify it, to make it look better. We actually go with the keywords with the capital and go with the other statements, whichever you write all these additional things with smaller case letter. That's for look and feel purpose. That's how we follow the pattern so that it is easy to identify what we have written and how we have written it. So I want to also explain about the buttons we have on it. So these are the buttons we have on it. So like we have the save button, I'll show you on the screen. This I can show you better when we are taking it as an example. See, this is where we save. So whatever you have written it here will be saved. And if there are any errors in your program, so with this, you will do a syntax checks so that will give you if there are any errors. So if there are no syntax checks, that's when you do activate. So this highlighted one, which is like some light, you know, so that is where you use it to activate the program. The program runs only once it is activated. 
until the program is activated it will not be executable so we are saying about executing it right what does executing it means so that means once you have done your code if you want to see the output or if it has to give you some output you have to run the program so that's where we call it as execute this is the button that is used to execute it so these or so these are the shortcut commands we have the shortcut keys like for copy and paste similarly we have for all this we mostly use f8 every time because that's a function key that's a shortcut key for executing the program and from, from first screen itself you can execute the program so this we have explained it in a better manner what does save do save will help you in saving the statements you have written the code you have written so it's always better with each with a couple of statements you have written save it if you don't save it it doesn't have an automatic save so we'll lose the data so save it and syntax will help you to check if you have written in any mistake in between and only once the program is activated as i said we can run the program so if you directly click on activate without saving it first saves the program then it will fetch the inactive objects in the repository and then the activating program will give you a runtime object that is used when the program is being executed so the direct processing the f8 screen asset will execute the program and it's when you will know whether the output is as expected or not suppose you have written a code like 5 plus 4 should give 9 then your program you have to see whether it is giving nine or not that's when you click on the execute and we will see whether the code you have written is working as you have expected or not so before we go to the next so we were here basically describing about this program and we just this is a very simple program so this would not take much time to write it save it and activate it so later we will uh, I'll introduce you about what the syntax is, what all it does mean, and what else can, what else can be written. So for the same purpose, uh, I guess lab activities would have been given to you. So this is the first simple exercise for it, the common hello world program for you all. So most of you are on web GUI. So this is how the web GUI looks like. If not, this is how the SAP GUI looks. So I'm just showing how the screen looks like. So it all looks the same, just that the look and feel of the web UI and GUI changes a little, not much. OK, OK, so let's do one thing for the first time. I will also do along with you the exercise. I also want you all to follow the steps along with me. If you want, you can open your lab activity as well. Or as I can show you, it has a similar steps. So this is where we generally enter our transaction code. So that means whichever screen you want to go, whether you want to do a program, whether you want to see some details. So if we call them as T codes, which means transaction codes. So whatever you want to do, you have to enter that code here and it will take you to that screen. So I'll show you that. So this is how it will take you to that particular screen. Okay. So there are so many other transactions also. So this is one way we start our coding with. So that's why. So if you are in the screen, if you want to change to a different screen, so there's a different transaction. Uh, don't worry about these transactions. I'll tell you about these transactions later. So what it does, it has changed my screen. Have you all noticed? I came to a new transaction. There is one more thing backslash o which gives you a new screen so now i'm giving our report screen okay sorry this is web gui so it will not open to but you are in sap gui then it will open a new screen so here what all we can do is like if we are in the screen and if you want to go a new screen backslash n se 38 i'll show you how that works here okay just for your understanding so suppose i open one screen now this works only on this GUI, SC38 itself. Don't worry about it. The transaction is SC38. This is where we are going to do. So what I'm saying is sometimes you would need to work on multiple screens, right? Let me see if there is no restriction. So how you can come to this new screen? This is one screen. If you want to have multiple screens and if you want to go from the same screen, suppose if I directly enter SC38 here, it will be on same. It will not go 
So if you want to go to a new screen on the same page, if you want to go, then you have to give backslash n on the same page. If you want to go to a new screen. For example, I'm giving a C24, but we are not working on a C24. We'll be working only on a C38. Don't get confused. This is to show you how to go to a new screen. So I moved it onto a new screen on the same page. If you see, there is no this program tab. I'll close this. There is no more that program tab, but I want to keep the screen as is. And I want a new program, new screen where I can write my hello world program. This is how I open it. Backslash O will always open a new screen. Backslash N will always the change, always change the screen to a new screen. This is just for your understanding, but I'll go back to web UI and show you how we write our first program. So this is clear, right? I'm just trying to explain what does that slash N slash O means and how the screens will appear. Don't get confused with the transaction be the transaction as is i'm back to onto your web gui so i said whatever we have to create it starts with z so if you see there are already some z programs which are existing or which would have been used so this is how it shows the existing z programs but we have to create something this name should be and will be unique for every report so whatever you want so as this is a training i want it as sap abap so name it as ZAPAP and give it as whatever you want. OK, uh, why is it happening? Because I have given the same name and you are trying to give the same name and we both are using the same system that is A4H. So you can start with ZAPAP instead of first program. You can give a different name. Just give program one. Yeah, anything, anything as you wish. Now click on create. So the naming conventions are, doesn't matter. Developer 10 is currently editing. So take a unique name, maybe add your developer IDs. So that's why you're not able to edit it. So you can't edit it because someone is already using it. So the name has to be unique. It is not case sensitive. So that's why you are naming, add your uh, developer IDs instead. Yeah, this would be better. Create, hopefully, yes. And I want you all to select it as executable program on the attributes. You could see different programs here. So these were include program means this will be used somewhere in other program. So function group is where we use it for other purposes. So when we learn further about work about workbench, we'll see what this means. But Basically, when we create a report, we'll all go with an executable program. So I want you all to select executable program. Yes, and the status will by default be unclassified. So we are writing this program to test it. So based on the customer requirement, this is not a standard production program. So we'll not go for if it's a required for customer production, we'll go for customer protection or if they haven't specified even having unclassified doesn't affect it but we are going for a test program so I want to select test program you can select the status as test program and then authorization group all this will only be specified if it is required so now we actually don't need to specify any of this so don't specify any of this but I'll just show you what it is so if you see here we have a drop down right so if you click on this button, it will show you the list of entries which are relevant for that particular field. So if you want to restrict authorization, whoever wants to use, then we will select the relevant one. These are all provided by SAP. If customer wants some restrictions, we will also create those authorizations. It's not necessary that we will create. Admin team will sometimes create and whoever is required, they will create and give us the authorizations. We will add those authorizations to restrict them. So in ABAB, we call this as F4 help. Anyway, we call it as a for help here also, we'll have it as F4 help. That means you can select the required one based on the help but we are not giving any authorizations here. And we call these as drop downs. So even this is not required because these will be relevant only when we are developing a real time one. So now I'm clicking on save. 
appears. So here again, we have FO help. Don't give anything. This I'm just showing to how it exists. So if there are any existing packages, it will show the list of packages. So these were the standard packages that were existing. So whenever your customer comes to you and asks you, like, I need this report. I want this development to be done. We will create a separate package for him and then we will add. So this is a test program, so we will not add it to package because if we add it to any package, that's when it asks for transport. So where I have mentioned from development system, it goes, it has to go to quality, then a transport is required. That's when we add it. But for now, for our first program, let's not go deep into it and further we'll know about it. Click on local object. So this will create a temporary package like dollar temp and it will open the screen. Basically, here you can't see the color coding difference. So through above editor settings, we can adjust that because we are on web GUI on our general developments. We will not use web GUI. We'll use it on above screen. So we'll create it. I can again show you the program over there. So write whatever you want to write here. You can give the statement. Sorry, you can give the statement. Uh, it's not necessary. You all have to write hello world. Whatever you want to write, you can type anything. So if it is in single quotes, so it is in single quotes, then it will take that as particular line of code. So after this, I want to check. So generally here we'll have the you know icons for it, but here we don't have the icons, but we have the code for it. No syntax errors found. Can you? Um, enlarge your system, there is this arrow marks which has other buttons as well. So you have it in small format, right? Can you make it big? So see, so why? Because it is having less space. It is not showing you all those. So there you can see these arrow marks, right? Mm -hmm. So you can click on that arrow marks. It will show you more options. Okay. Th with this, we also see that how the errors will be displayed. So I actually have thought like we'll show it, but good, we already got an example of it. Okay, I'm used to go to GUI. So then I ask you all to click on activate. Okay, can you click on direct processing? So whatever you have written, you have written your first program, first line with this, right? So uh, click on display to change. So what we have done basically was when you are in change, sometimes it will not show the status of it. So and you would have clicked on this active double arrow inactive button. So that's why it didn't activate it. So yeah, uh, having these buttons is a little confusing. I also get sometimes confused. So icons are more easier than this. On to the end, you know, last but third one, you have this activate button. Yeah. So we because it both looks active, we'll just go and click on active, active to inactive. So that happens, that sometimes even happens with us if we have these buttons over icons. So that's why we will only keep the relevant icons. So good, this is how the output will look like. Let me explain and show you the other syntaxes. So this is the lesson two for us, where I'll for today, I'll only explain about what ABAP syntax is and what our comments means. We'll add comments into our existing code itself. That one thing we will do. So yeah, ABAP language is typed. Whatever you type, it's there, right? So ABAP language is typed and also it's a across multilingual applications. So there are cases where people have written in um, Comments can be written in it and people use according to their language. We have logged in to EN. That's why we could see it in English. So the translation will happen at another level. Uh, that would be a deeper topic, which will be covered later. And the statements, whatever we write in ABAP are basically the SQL statements. And also ABAP has been advanced to OOPS. That means object oriented programming. Uh, okay, to show you an example, I have clicked the transaction in C24. That actually takes you to this object-oriented programming, creating classes. How do the classes exist? It's not as easy like Java, but it also looks the same. It has that. We will have a brief introduction on the usage of classes and what can be done. And ABAB language is platform independent and it also upward compatible. So these are all key characteristics of this. What else can be done and all. 
you have the slides with you. This is like, what does a syntax mean? What does a function means? How it works and how it operates? So now ABAB is not just for dialogue based business, but it was initially developed so, but has been modified based on the requirement. So we all we have already started with a keyword like right, which is a keyword and we have ended with period. We have also seen that exception, which I plan to show here, but then we have already seen it. And what all this additional operands means, whatever you have written, like hello world or whatever you want to write and it can have multiple lines also. So words must be separated by at least one space. If you give double space also, it will not affect the code. So this is how it looks like if it's a select statement, all these will practice later, but I want to show how it works. So here there are some statements which just look like this new line, which is just an ABAP statement and which can only be a keyword. If you see this, this is a mixture. This is a SQL query. This is how the SQL query looks like. This is a mixture of keywords and the additional operands and everything. So if you see line one is there, line two, line three, line four. So this got ended at line four with a period. So it will not consider these three as individual statements. One, two, three, four. All these lines of code, these four lines of code combined together is a statement. This part is clear. Just an enter does not split the code. An enter along with a dot split the code. Keyword should not be separated. So that means you can't enter after SEL in select. So keywords has to be specified full. But what is it we'll learn later? I want to show you how it looks. So, okay, so if we're not using the procedures and all, so this is an SQL query. So if you want to have a different query, so this statement ended with this dot, right? So after the statement, whatever you write will be the next statement. This is a line of code. So all this together is a statement. Basically, if you read this word, the statement means, so it is fetching the details from this table. It is fetching these particular fields into this based on some condition. So this isn't basically an ABAP uh, SQL. So which all together forms one statement. So it only ends with, draw. if you see here, this has been ended here. So that means it has only keyword. So this ended with only one line. This ended with multiple lines. Multiple lines doesn't mean that the code has been separated. The code will be only separated with a period. So how you separate it? Everything you will write, the, the thing that comes in the next line will become a new statement because new line is one statement and this is one statement. So these are already separated. If we will understand how this works in further classes. Here I just want to show how they look like and what they are like. So this is how the chain statements also look like. Just now we were discussing about the colon and semicolon. So write the identical beginning part of the statement that is the keyword followed by colon. So what we are doing here, I'll quickly show. Uh, see, banks, places, and line breaks are allowed before and after the separators. So what can be done? What does this mean? I'll show, I'm not sure how much time we are left with. Okay, we just have four minutes. Uh, we'll write a comment for today and uh, how we split and how we create the selection screen that we can see tomorrow. So what is a comment? Comment does actually means what, what you have written in your line of code. If someone comes and sees your line of code, they have to understand it, right? So here, this is how the ABAP code looks like. I'll explain about these parameters, data elements, everything later. In the next session itself, in our data dictionary, you'll understand about this data types, all these parameters itself. So here, the right statement is there if you see, okay? This is what we have used. On top of it, there is something that has been written, but starts with an asterisk or double quotes. So anything that starts with double quotes anywhere at any point of the uh, code becomes comment. And anything that starts at the start of the code with asterisk becomes comment. So this is how we'll mention comments. So, but comment will not be executed. Comment is just for the purpose of understanding it. So uh, I want all of you to write one comment on your ri report right away. Can you do it, please?
This is what I have explained about asterisk and double colon, uh, sing double quotes. So it's always good to have the comments. This is how what kind of comments were good. That's what we are explaining, trying to explain here. So one I'm adding with asterisk. Asterisk means it should start at the first column itself. Whatever you write in asterisk, comment double quotes can be there anywhere. And it doesn't need that you need in full stop or anything because it's comment. I'll show you how these actually look different. Then click on activate again and click on direct processing. So it will only show you the executable program and not the code. It's working, right? You have written the comments, right? So you can test this. If I if I give a space here, no. If I click on check, see? The statement is invalid because you can't give this anywhere else. It should be at the starting line itself if you are using asterisk. Just give me a second because you, I want to show it to you how it looks on um, a Bab GUI, how the difference looks on because web GUI, we can't see anything. So now we can identify the difference. I know on web GUI, it's not really clear. I'm really sorry. That's why we can't use, you can't really identify it. But here you can identify the difference between comments. So even this is a command. These are generated by default for reports like this. So if we write something like this, then it's a command like this. Whatever we add here will be like this. You can add multi-line comments, but uh, if you are starting in the next line, okay, I'm actually editing here. So if you start in the next line, if you try to type something directly, it will not take. See, it, it will not take. Either you have to comment it or you have to give double quotes. Every new line, the comment must be specified that it is a comment with an asterisk at the starting point of the column or double quotes. Don't give asterisks in this line because already you have a line of code. If you want to give next to a statement, we should always use double quotes. If we want to give above or below a statement, that's when we use asterisks. So I will write here as a BAP program, then it will take then. So this is the checkbox I'm saying about. This is how it looks. So these are the icons which are identifiable so you can activate it like this uh, in the next class i'll show you having some parameters like where you can add name on screen and then execute and then you can see the output so i'll just give a summary of what we have discussed yesterday so we have created our first ABAP program so we have seen what keywords are we have seen what comments are and we have also seen that how we should write a statement so that there should be a space and keyword will be highlighted for us and followed by our additional parameters and the statement should end with period uh, so once we write our program what is the first activity that we have to do anyone check check for the syntax yeah good and once we check for activate. the syntax activate. yes activate. perfect, then, perfect. Uh, then we can execute and test right yes 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 good so we are on the same page so we'll be checking our syntax then we'll be activating and then we'll be executing the program so today in our next session we'll firstly see what else and how else can the statements be written? And also we will see how we can have some selection screen. Sometimes you want to give some data and you want to get the output. Like for example, if you take an addition, so you want to give the two variables and you want to see the output. So where will we give the parameters? Where will we give those values? So that's what we will see today in our programming. Followed by, we'll also see into the tables what we have discussed in our earlier sessions. We have seen about the comments and also here we could see apart from our right statement, we have few values, parameters and data. So without any keyword, these are declared. We will quickly see how that are being declared. So here we have few more keywords, like the keyword what we have used so far is only right. So, but now we will see 
few keywords like split. Today we will see like right. We have so many other keywords which we will be using throughout our curriculum and throughout our course. We will get to know different keywords. So apart from right today, we'll see a few other keywords. One among them is split. Split is nothing but the keyword that does the activity onto a particular variable or onto a particular string, which we want to split into two characters or two variables or however we want. We will look into an example on that also. Once we get the system, we can look into it. And also there are few inbuilt code or inbuilt programming in a map which can be used. So those we call them as functions. So you would have seen or heard about functions in any programming language. In a similar manner, we also have functions in ABAP. So these functions do certain activities. So we can also create functions or we can also use existing functions. Even this can be called into our ABAP programming. We will see one such example, like however they have used here. So these are the other activities or other coding line statements of code that can be used on our ABAP program. So this is what we have seen yesterday that clicking on F1, we will get an pop up that shows how well that particular keyword can be used. So and also there will be this documentation on the keyword to understand what it does and what it is helpful for. So this is about the keyword documentation. OK, before we go into lesson three, uh, Naveen, uh, I guess we can wait for a couple of minutes and then we can start with the next session, right? OK, so as we just now discussed, like how we will be handling if you want to give some data from your system and then you want to see the output, how we can do that. So that's where we do that using parameters onto your ABAP programming language onto your ABAP editor. So what is that? What is a parameter means? Uh, we would always know what is an A and what is a B. So what are these? These are the variables which we use generally in your mathematics. So if you give a value to A and B, and if you write like an output is equals to A plus B, it will pick the values which you give in A and B, and it will give you the output. In the similar manner, we are having parameters which we call and use them for any activity that you do in ABAP editor programming. So here they have taken an example like name. So when you write your Hello World program along with Hello World or Hello Bar programming, you want to add your name or you want to add something or else you want to give the whole message from the parameter itself. In that case, we'll be using this parameter name. Whatever value you enter here will be used and will be given as whatever value we use here will be displayed in the output and we will also modify the values every time. It's not like once you give the value, it will be standard. No, every time you have to give the value. We could see further details on what a parameter means. So we are already aware of an input field, right? So these parameters actually act as input fields and the screen where we enter these values, like once you write on programming, we will see in for the few minutes how it looks like. So we call the area where we enter our values as selection screen, whereas the values where we see our output as an output screen. So every parameter we define in our ABAP program will be having only one input field for it. So even the selection screen has an execute button like you have it on the starting page on your edit page in a similar manner we will have an execute button on our selection page. So once you execute that, it picks up the values, passes it to the next statement, whichever you have used it and wherever you have placed uh, like the particular variable, and then it gives you the output. So this is the example of it. So here we could say, so yesterday we have written this right statement. So once we declare the parameters, we can write it like another statement say, stating that right the particular parameter so whichever we declare here whichever value we give here you have to give the same name and we have to use the same name in future so we 
basically call them as data. So these data elements or these variables will be used further wherever you want to display it. So, so this is how the selection screen look, looks like. Not exactly, but this is how the parameter name will be given. And when you enter a value onto it and click on execute, so whatever value that you have given will be assigned to that variable. And then when you write, it will pick that particular value and then it displays. So even this can be used further. So this is a name. That's why we are not doing any calculation. Suppose you are taking an integer and you want to make some calculations or based on this name, you have data saved somewhere else and the names are unique and you want to find different surnames for that particular name, even for these activities. This All right, let's test your knowledge. Here's a question for you. Which of the following is not a type of data object in ABBA? Option A, structures. Option B, tables. Option C, classes. Option D, arrays. Take a moment to think, and when you're ready, choose the correct option. Remember, each choice holds a key to unlock in the answer. Good luck. Type the correct answer in the comment section. Hey there, are you ready to dive into the world of SAP ABAP? Our self-paced course on our platform is your ticket to mastering this essential skill. In this course, you'll unlock the secrets of SAP ABAP, the language behind customizing SAP applications. Think of it as your toolkit for making SAP do exactly what you need it to do. Our curriculum covers everything from the basics to advanced techniques, crafted by seasoned experts who know the ins and outs of SAP ABAP like the back of their hand. Meet your instructor, a seasoned pro in the world of SAP, ready to guide you through every step of your learning journey and answer any questions you might have. But don't just take our word for it. Hear it from our satisfied students. They found our course invaluable in their journey to SAP mastery. And the best part, it's all at a price that won't break the bank. Quality training shouldn't come with a hefty price tag, and we've made sure of that. So, are you ready to level up your SAP skills? Don't miss out. Sign up now on our Teachable course page. And for more information, visit Zarentech's website below for full details on the training curriculum and formats. Selection screen helps. These parameters help. Parameters will be used in multiple places in multiple usage cases. So we have to identify which parameters are required and what I have to do. So here basically we have seen input field, right? So similarly, we also will have check boxes, radio buttons, all these, but they'll start with a different keyword called checkbox and radio button. So firstly, we'll concentrate on parameter. Once we are good with the parameter, we can add a checkbox or radio button and see how they'll be displayed on the selection screen. So here, even for us, they have shown, they have added two parameters, one for the name and one for the age, and they want to use this later. So. This is good that we see the parameters as PA name and PA age. So why they are calling it as PA underscore? That's the naming convention we used to follow. So ABAP has some certain naming conventions. This is for feel good purpose and look good purpose. If someone suddenly comes, you didn't add PA, they will not understand it's a parameter. So to, for understanding it and have a better understanding of what it is, so whether it's a parameter, whether it is a checkbox or why you are using this particular name so to understand that we'll follow certain naming conventions which will either be the standard ones or sometimes we enhance in our project as well based on our needs if suppose they mention like i want the naming convention in certain format i want it as pa underscore uh, some other variable or pa underscore if they are about P and score above. So, but you can't give a big name because even parameters have a length restriction. So, we have to give in that certain limit. So, here they have taken two. So, if you see it, PA name, you will not understand what is PA name actually. So, it could be like person name, it could be an organization name, it could be none, any kind of name, or it could be a different value. So, we will also see how we can give the 
text to that particular variable. If it is a PA name, then how you want to give the text? I want to give the text as organization name, whereas PAH, I want to give the name as uh, the uh, organization years, number of years the organization is with, or else I want to give it as a person name, and I want the age to be person's age. So wherever I want, whatever wo value I want, I will give the values in selection text. So how we will give it in selection text, I'll show you in some time. So here, these are variables. Mm -hmm. These okay. are data types. So we will also cover about the types which we can use and what are the pre-existing values. And sometimes you want a different value than pre-existing value. So how how will we use it then? So these will be covered in our BAP dictionary for us. We have the topic also. So there we will see what else can be declared and what else can be added as values over there. Uh, so I feel it would be good if we have the system now. Uh, let me explain this one use case and then we can go for it. So this is what I have just mentioned that for every parameter we can keep a selection test. So we have translation available for ABAP. So anyone can give or declare their translation text. So if we are developing in English, but our customer needs it in French, then we will ask them for French translation. So then we will add the French language. So depending on whichever language you log on to your system, it will display that particular language. So if you add messages or if you add content, so every time we create it, the translation is required if we want to display in different languages. So that's why we have also said that ABAP is multilingual and it supports multi languages. So I also remember that it will even support Japanese if you give the language correctly. So you, what are all predefined or pre-existing languages? The set of languages can be declared like this and you can pick from those languages and give the text. So how that can be done is like through translation. So translation is a screen where we maintain value for each language. So with the about this we'll see later, but firstly I want to concentrate on creating the parameters, getting the output and so on. So this is how we will do for write also. So we can perform the same on write activity also. Front end editor. So we have options like front end editor, back end editor. These are all basically how the screen looks like and how the screen changes. Okay. So we also have few more things like what can be set onto the screen to have the coding in place or to get the keywords automatically. So here there are a few points which are mentioning about the line numbers. This is how it looks with the line numbers and the different colors. All these can be identified, but um, like this is not identifiable on web GUI. So we, you can check on this later. So if you see where we are, if we keep the settings based on that, you can see the scope and these are all displayed if you select user specified settings. So what you want to display, what type of fonts and colors you want. And if you want the code to be automatically completed, like if you want to display that keyword, then how, how do you want to do if you give control space then it will automatically show so these are all existing templates so we'll understand about this if and loop statements in future how it will propose us the next statement like if i write if uh, it will propose me like you have to do end it with an end if it will automatically give it all these can be done using these options so these you can try on your own. You will be able to understand. So these are just for your practice and adjusting your screens. And we'll also learn about reminding things like debugging and so on. So even in that scenarios, you can check. So the same thing, whichever I have specified here, you can see that you can have different objects, different colors. We can select it because we do have the options from user specified selections. So this is what I'm saying, like how we can get the keywords automatically. So using those activities, all of you try it. You can get multiple options. Once you get the GUI, you can practice on this. As of now, you will not be able to practice because it's web GUI. So this is the other thing I mentioned about pretty printer.
So Pretty Printer is just like to beautify your program. This we do in any other programs in the similar manner. We'll do it for this particular program as well. So here you can see this Pretty Printer. So if you see already we have convert uppercase and lowercase, uppercase as keyword, and the remaining lowercase will be the additions which you have added. So these are the just specific activities which can be done on Pretty Printer. You can try and see how all it works. Debugging and reminding things we will see in our further sessions, even in pattern to understand about pattern. We have a special class for understanding about functions and classes and methods. In that session, we will go deeper into it. So all these belongs to different activities. So for now, we are on ABAP editor. So that's why I'm explaining only about ABAP editor screen. Reminding we will discuss in the particular relevant sessions. So let me get back here. So the same thing we are trying to explain, like how it can be edited, how it can be modified, how we can work on the settings. So this is a keyword specification, how it can be done. So if you give tab, if it is highlighting, it will automatically give the word. So this is like giving keyword sessions through the user specified settings, you can adjust it. So these are the templates, code templates, which I have mentioned about the if the loop statements, we, it will hint you like what it will be done. If you click on tab, it will automatically give the value. So this is a symbol that it shows if there is an if statement or so. So these all we will practice when we go deeper into it. So we have seen code templates. We have if what do you want to display? You can adjust it or if you can add it. By default, it will be there. You can add it if you want more. So these are all the editor settings. So I don't want to take much time on this because this only explain us how it, we want it to look and all. So and also this part we have already seen like it will give error if we don't end it with a period and we have to click on activate to proceed further. OK, so why this is happening is higher. So when we are using the right statement and if you want to give two keywords, you have to give colon after the right statement. Uh, it has to be I. P A is is not type L. I means integer. After right colon is missing. Why? Because if you're adding two, yes, there itself. On the first statement, it's not required, but here just next to right. Yes. So what I'm trying to say is like after right, you should give a colon. Semicolon colon we have, right? Like how we have given after parameters in the same manner. Yes. So this session, we will be talking about data types in ABAP dictionary. So ABAP dictionary is whatever we have talked about database tables and all. So we will be going through that and we will understand what basically happens over there. So, so firstly, we'll start with the creation of domain and data elements. So domain is that the belonging of it in general English, how we call it so true. So the set of uh, area or environment, whatever you want to call it, it's all works for it. So now before we get into domain, I want to explain you what these means. So this is an ABAP dictionary screen. So this you will be able to see through another transaction called SE11. We will get to it. But firstly, I'll explain this and then we'll look into the screen. So firstly, we'll start with data types because we will be using these data types and these data types has different types under it, like data element structure and table types. So data elements are basically called as elementary types because they we define that data type, the length, the decimal places, however we want it. Like we have already seen the types like string, integer and all. So what if, if you want it into a table? We will not be declaring directly a string or something. We'll be creating data elements because we are specifying some name to it. We are specifying some fixed character to it and we are restricting it. So that's where we create the data elements. And then structures. What a structure is, is like it consists of different components that can have any kind of type. So structure is basically the part of a table. It's like uh, the blueprint of a table, we call it, because we don't have any data saved in it, but you will see how it should look like. If you're using for a table, how it should 
look like it's not always necessary to create a structure and then only create a table but it's a good practice so that if someone wants to use the structure and modify it into a different table they can reuse it so it's okay if sometimes we create a database table directly and use it directly as well like the type of the table as well so that's where the table types come in for the database table if you want to create any table type so then we can create it and here basically the table type is the structure of an internal table so whatever we create in structure if we have to use it as a table format then we call it as table types so here we have started explaining about domain so where do we use domain why do domains came in picture so we just spoke about data element structure and table types so domains are used to manage the technical properties of the data element suppose you have a data element name and you want to give it as a character and you want to have a length of 30 then instead of giving a data type level you can create one more thing called domain so domain will be name and in domain you will say like this domain this name is a property which should be having character of length 30 so what you will do is like the domain can be used in multiple data elements so you want to have an organization name as 30 length you want to have a press name as third element 30 you want to have a media name you want to have a person name you want to have a social activity name anything you can use this domain and thereby you can create a data element and this can be reused so this domain comprises of settings format and even output characteristics so if it is of a smaller field how i want to show the name if it is of a bigger field how i want to show the name so what are the values that i can restrict onto domain so we can perform various activities onto your domain so that's where you can see for this domain on top of domain we are creating data elements and these data elements are used in declaration of a structure so structure means you can take a table consisting of employee details and all these employee details whatever you will add onto it will be there in structure for each field you will create a data element so let me start it in this manner we're all there so you are all employees of TCS. Now, suppose think that there is some activity that it is performing and I want to take all your 26 people name. I want to take uh, your hobbies or something like that. So, so suppose I have asked one Spock and I ask you to collect name of everyone, favorite sport or favorite TV show and uh, hobbies of everyone and give the data to me so that if I look at it, I can understand it. How will you give me the data? So we know the table formats are better. So in a table, what will be the values? What will be the fields? We call them as fields. So what all you will name it over there? In ABAP, we call those as fields in any way we can call it as field right even you can call it as field names row names all this so we just said like if i want the details of all of you the first thing will be your name the employee name second field would be favorite sport the next field would be favorite tv show and a hobby so they are four fields all together so next time when i have to create these what i will do is like all these will be having a character format itself right but the naming is different so i can create a domain i can say that i want only one value so the character I want to restrict it to say 60 so i'll mention a domain as care 60 but i'll create different data elements for these four so for name i want to give i don't want to give the same data element or domain but for favorite sport favorite TV show and hobby, I want to create three data elements which will take the same domain name. Whereas for name, I want to take it as first name and last name because there could be people who we have the same name. I guess we have Shivam, two, two Shivams in our um, presentation, right? Like with the same name. So how can you identify the difference? So with the last name. So that's how we can have first name and last name, and I can create a different domain for it, having different characters and create a data element and continue. 
So whatever I have created now, I can either use these in a structure or use these in a table. So whatever you create onto your ABAP dictionary table, it by default created DB level table with the same table name, whatever you have created on ABAP data dictionary. So now I have mentioned about the format. So what does the format means? It means the data type. So where it is something like string, character, integer, or so on, the number of characters, the length of that data type, and that also we can enter onto that domain. Then if it is a numerical value, if it is having decimal places, then you have to specify how many decimal places it has. If it is not having decimal places, then you will not mention it. So I said like we have some pre-existing data types used in, right? So these are the example for those. They are like this char, character string. We also have something for date. So, okay, I did I, huh. so, so how you can want to use so the character is basically 255 characters it's not always necessary to use such a big string so we also have different characters like date so date is by default set with eight characters it follows dd mm y by y format so in that film we already have this pre-declared into a bab so the decimal point so how many maximum characters is like if it's a decimal then it is 31 characters and so this field is the calculation or the amount of field with the decimal point and also it will have this plus or minus that's the sign of an integer and it can have separators also and the next one is numc which is used for numeric field so this numeric field restriction is this will be the character string but it can only take the numbers the other one which we have seen car is a string which can take anything whereas numsy will take only the numbers so now we see like there are different data types we can create we can even add the data types onto data elements it's not like it won't accept it does accept but having a domain would have you a restriction at the further level itself it can be reused so sometimes we do the declarations even at data element level but the good practice is to create a domain and from domain create the data elements so what data elements basically define is like those or the data types and which we use on screens also so for selection screen which you have created we just create give pa name type we have given what string but if you have an existing data element, we can give the data element, not the domain name. We'll give the data element if you want to do a type declaration. So why we want to give the data element is these data elements will be used in tables. So if you want to have a search help, so in one of our yesterday's session, we have seen this uh, drop downs and F4 box, which has given us these values. So how did it give us that values is like, for the type declaration they have used the data elements so what these data elements basically do is like they will give the set of values that were existing for that data element this data element you will be used in a table so what values are applicable for that what values exist in that table so th those can be displayed so thus that is how they have created this so this screen is without F4 help and this screen is with F4 help. So you can see the list of values for that particular data elements on it. So, so they have both semantic and technical information about data type. So once we look at the screen, we'll get a better picture of what a data type looks like and how a data type looks like. So what else, what else will be there on data element screen is like documentation. Sorry. Uh, so what else can be done on um, data elements is like documentation. So we can create the text that describe the contents of a data element. So you have created a data element. If someone comes and looks at it, they want to understand what it means, what does the data element do so for any activity there is this documentation on our ABAP screen we can give the documentation for easy understanding so search help is the f4 help so we will also see in our further sessions how this data element can be used as an f4 helps and 
we also the set and get parameters so these are like if we have an existing parameter using set parameter id and get parameter id you can get the data element value so getting the value of that particular data element can be done using this set or get parameters so once you add this set or get parameters to the data element it helps the user from entering the particular same value multiple times so we can have a default value which will be stored in sap memory and that can be fetched automatically just by using set and get parameters and this will not be saved once the user logs off so until you are onto that screen you don't need to enter the value multiple times and it will be available once you set it and then you can get that anywhere else so they are not saved in sap gui history okay so we have other additional options like default component. So we can have the component for BAPI structures if we are using them in BAPI structures. In our ABAP workbench classes, when you understand, when we read about these BAPIs, that's where we will see how this can be used. And the next one is change document. This is basically for the purpose of to see who has changed it, who last changed it, who has created it. So that's where we use this change documents as the name says that is how it's used input history so this is basically the mechanism that sap gui is already using for the screen of the to see whether you want to see the history of it so this basically sets in our sets off based on the switch you select and we do have bi-directional options for this data elements as well what are the simple and this nested structures in a BAP? So basically, structure is like the blueprint of a table. We also call it as work area when we use it in programming. So what does a structure consist of? Structure can have data elements. It can have integrated types or else it can also have table type so it's a line of a table type structure will become a line of a table type and it can also have the definition of database tables and database views so existing database tables and views which are created even those can be added onto structure so it basically depends on how you want to create the structure and what all can be included in a structure so a deep structure can also be created using a table type that means if you have uh, so this is an example of that so where this is a simple structure and we'll get to know about the deep structure in the next slide so the simple structure is just a simple format of collection of fields like the example what we have taken employee favorite sport favorite tv show and hobby all are single single right only one we are picking so that will become a simple structure here they have taken an example of address so address is one structure whereas under address you have fields like street then the pin code and the city so this becomes the work area so what is a work area it's nothing but the structure so to identify identify the work area they have it as wa that's the data type the data object based on its structure type can be one dimensional so here we have taken the address so when you want to pass the values onto the address so the work area hyphen that field name that's how we specify the structure name when you use it in the coding so how we implement this in a bar programming we will look into it but before that we will first see how the structures will be created and how it will be used so what we have seen above is a simple structure so that means there is this object called address it has three fields there will be another object called person so this is a structure it has name and address what does a name mean for a person will have both first name and last name so name will be a table type and address will be an another table type which will be used to create a structure so basically the structure is having 
name address and name is again having two more fields it's like the nested tree you understand like one field will have again two fields the same thing is happening here name is having two fields and address is having three fields and if you want to read something or pass something for such fields how we do is like first hyphen for the first field and then other hyphen for the next field so for name we have one hyphen work area hyphen name and for first name of the name we again have one more hyphen and one more hyphen to have the last name so this is how you will identify the nested structures so this components of these nested structures refer to a new object every time in a nested structure so so that means this is like a structure inside a structure that part is clear right address is one structure for us and person is an another structure which is having and structure so that's when we call it as deep structures nested structures same thing above and below okay so basically for our easy understanding uh what is it structure is like it will be having two fields and it can be used in multiple places also so uh, follow to this we will also see what are table types and we will later see how this can be used in um, programming in the next session itself like we'll see based on the timing we'll see till where we can cover so the first part is about the structures the next part is about table types okay so what is a table types it's a dictionary structure containing one or more fields using a table type then we call it as a deep structure which is a nested structure which we have seen above and we can define these table types using existing dictionary types dictionary types or nothing but the dictionary tables which we would have created or which are existing ones so this table type can be created from the existing type or you can create it from the new types as well so database tables structure definitions views data elements direct direct type definitions existing table types all these can be used for table type declaration so to understand better about this when we create the types and when we create the structure and use it in a table you will understand better so this is something that is explaining to us about the table types so table type we just understood that it's a line type that defines the structure and data types of an attribute for an internal table internal table is a reference of a data base table so it's not the database table but you can pick it either as a database table or you can only create the different fields to an internal table so internal tables are something that we manipulate into our abab programming onto our abab reports that's where we have these internal tables we'll add the fields we'll have the structures if we want to modify like the employee thing which we have decided suppose you want to modify it before you add it to the database table then all those activities are not directly performed on the table but they are performed in our program level on the internal tables so what does internal table consists of the consists of structures or the consists of data elements the consists of views and all these different kinds of things so these are basically the definitions of the table types so what are the mandatory fields that are required are so we will have the access mode so this helps us to manage and access the data of that particular table type so this can be either standard table which will be used as a database table and remaining or sorted hashed and index tables and we presently use standard table and that's the most used table so we will mostly concentrate on that so what is the primary key so primary key is something like suppose you have a table so if you want to identify the uniqueness how can we identify it is based on the primary key as i have taken an example of you if you are set of employees how will i identify one person is different from the other person if you are all having the same names so that is with your employee id in this scenario employee id will be the unique key and the employee will 
name will be the alternate you key because the employee name can be different or it can be the normal field even without the primary key. So the secondary key is something like apart from your employee ID, I have taken some other ID which will be different like the name. So with this employee ID, with this name, there will be only one person. So the second one, we call it as secondary keys. And the secondary keys are not always mandatory. It will be different and it's based on the need. We'll have the secondary keys. And to understand about this data tables in SE 11 itself, while creating the data type, you have also seen the structure and table types, right? So those we will see in our practice session. But before that, uh, yeah, so this table types can be special table types or these range table types. Range is like if the value is like you have mentioned it like the range low value would be zero and highest value would be 10 or 100. That's when the range we call the tables as range and range table declarations will also be different based on the declaration you make onto the report. So you can declare the table types directly on the dictionary and there is also option we will be declaring table types only for that program. So that table type will only work for that program. It can't be used outside the program. If you create a table type in SC11 data dictionary, it can be reused in any report. Suppose if I create a table type now, all of you can use the table type because I have created it in SC11. Suppose I have created it in my program called Z ABAB first program, then none of you can use the table type because I'm creating it inside the ABAB program. So we will work on what are these table types and how we create these table types before we go into the next table type. So this they are explaining how we use the deep structure, what, what is the purpose of it and how an internal table can use it. Multi-direction is like passing the data, fetching the data, how they can act as those. All those detailings were given here. So this is the next topic, which is um, creating type groups. So we will also understand about this type groups and all, or else maybe I can explain about this type groups and then we can directly go into exercises. That would be faster so that we can directly concentrate on our exercise. So what are type groups? They are used to define the global complex data types, global constants and macros. So where we can use the global constants means if you have created something or if you want to use across the system at different programs or different functions, that's when we will be declaring this global constants. And also the name of this type group can contain a maximum of five characters. And in the type group, you can use the type statements. And for constants, you use the constant statements. And we can use the existing ABAP types or even global data dictionary types to declare these. So a type group is defined in ABAP code, that which we have seen in SE11 or even in SE38. So but where do we use this type group is based on whether see here they have created this type pool so this if they have created it in data dictionary it can be used across if they have created it in ABAP program it can be used only in that ABAP program if you see if they have created this everywhere it can be reused here but if you only declare it in program then it can be reused anywhere okay so structure as Giridhar said and as we have discussed yesterday it's like a single line of a table record which is used to consider the data, update the data, and write the data line by line onto a database table. So before you write the data onto a database table, you have to collect all this data into another table which is used internally. So to declare those, to have that structure in multiple lines and multiple row formats, that's where we use table type. So table types are nothing but references of our database table, whole table, whereas structures are references of our database table with a single line. So it's not always necessary that your structure should belong to only one data table. If you want to pick field values from different table, 
take like name and address or in two different table and you want to show in one table. That's where we have created our two Z structures and uh, we had planned to continue with creating a nested structure today. Okay, uh, so if someone of you have already created the nested structure, we'll have a look into it so that we can check how it has been done and others can also do the same and followed by which we'll use it in a report. And then we can proceed to other examples. Uh, so let's all pay attention here. We will understand how this nested structure has been created. And um, all of us can create at the same time now. OK, so uh, this is an one approach on how we create the nested structures. So if you click on the component, it will again take you to the structure. Uh, on the component type which you have given for the name yeah so okay. if we go into that you can see that it is again a structure so now come back click on the back on top on top you have this back right uh yeah so this is the address similarly we can see the list in the same manner you can go to any nested structure and also we can identify that whether these are single characters or multi characters from the structure itself. How means uh, can you go back to the other person structure. So in the person structure in data type instead of giving the characters if you see it is giving a single line which means it is giving a structure. So single line means it's a structure. It can take one value of entries. You can't give multiple also. It will be only one. So structure under a structure. Um, so if anyone of you have any doubt on this, let me know. If not, we'll create in the same manner how Twitter has created. Because we have already created other two structures. We just need to add it into a new structure. If we are using specifications like name and address separately, then we have to add that structure name also. So that's the difference between having an adding name directly and not adding name directly. So we tend to go for include approach and it's not necessary that it has to be always include approach. It will also be the direct approach like adding the name directly. So um, Pratiwa, can you move up on top because as it would take for me for me to yeah. turn on the system. I want to explain the steps and we could see whether everyone has done it already. So here in the parameters, what all we have taken was the first name, last name, and all the fields of the structure into parameters. So once you execute this report, all these parameters will be visible on your selection screen. And then we are appending those values into work area. So what is this work area is like, it will be type of the structure. So if you see at line 35, there we did a declaration. So all these, we call them as declarations. So if it is a data, that means you're taking into variable, we call them as data declarations. If we take them into types like table type structure, we call them as type declarations and we have other keywords like constant also. So constants means if you want to declare a hard coded value, then we declare it in a constant. So in the same example, I'll also show how a constant will be used. So after declaring it, after having the parameters, we are passing the parameter values into work area. So work area is of type which you have created as a structure and we are appending each field value and we are displaying it. So um, good approach. And um, so the other idea for me is like when you are doing the other lab exercises, we can comment the top lines of this code. So why that is, why that is suggestible is it will not give you multiple selection screens and confuse you. So from starting from the hello world program till line 32 we can comment the code so that we can see we can comment and uncomment it anytime so we can see whichever code we want to test at that particular time data declaration is required so the shortcut key is control plus lesser than arrow mark can you click on that yes so if you see uh, unselect see everything has been commented this is a shortcut key for commenting so why i asked her to comment this is like so that now you can only test the lab exercise too you don't need to you know check from the starting and wait for your code and reserve 
check your output at the end okay basically uh, a test system that's even i have checked so what we have created were ecc and hana real use kind of system so they would have created in we have something called sandbox so when they teach us they will provide us this sandbox access so sometimes these programs would exist i would not say they are existing they would exist if they import the right set of you know transports or wherever the program has been included so yeah uh, that's okay pradeep now i guess we'll all create the report now because this is an interesting one so you could see you could add and see the output so first we will work on the report and we can also work on how to add this onto a new line and we can check okay so this we are taking it as an example to display how the parameters and the output works so if you take a real time usage it's not always like we'll enter in parameters and we display the same so what we do is like we do other activities like i'll take tell you an example suppose you have an person name as harry potter and you want to fetch the address of the person so what they'll do on parameters we will only have harry potter given so in our code in our report we will write logic to select the address of the person harry potter and give the output as address and you will display output as address it's not always like uh, whatever parameters we give you what you said is real in real time scenario will not display it. this is for our understanding purpose to see whether whatever we are giving in parameters the values are displayed correctly whether the statements are working to understand the flow so when we get to real time usage yes we will also use the select queries in future so uh, because those are important but map will also use it that's when you'll understand the real time usage uh so for the first 5 minutes we'll try to create the structure all of you and once the structure is done then we will do the same program so if the structure is not done we can reuse the existing ones as well but yes so what asterisk actually means is like after z name there is something that you don't know so asterisk means it will select everything starting with z name so after that it could be character number anything so but it will pick and give you those program means um, in sc38 we will be able to find that is the coding part whereas structure means sc11 just we need to give backslash it. so it's a structure so select the data type radio button select z name whichever you have created yeah so you can create the person also now it explains as it explains the report itself that this is where the program has to start so whatever is there before the start of selection so that will be the you know initializing part but whatever the data it needs whatever the output it has to get all this starts from start of selection screen itself yes to include navigation and it is edit include insert yeah okay yes you can do that or i guess if we enter directly dot include also it will ask you that you can add the elements so any approach is fine if this is done i would use one of your includes and then we will go ahead with the report so let me share my screen first okay seems i'm facing this issue with the system every time i come back out of the screen it is giving me the error let me do this and i'll create a new user next time so here let's comment this or let's remove this so what i want to do was like okay i can't reuse it because all of you have created in a different system so we have created these like structure name structure address and so on so we can take these data elements and we can declare them with these data elements so if you see now i have used the data element and it has taken the same thing if we have an existing value help already given for that data element then you will also get the value help for this uh, so we will learn about the value helps and all while using them further so so if we come back to this here we'll have value range here we can give the value table so that explains us from where it should pick the values we have seen this button most of the times right if we click on this button it will show list of the entries so how we are getting 
this is not giving that but if we have to enter the table name and it will give you the list of entries so that is happening because it is having a value help associated to it so all that will be learning further so here you can use these declaration types and uh, we can do the same for last name all of you can follow this uh, and request you all to create the same and uh, so we can take street number so for that we have to take the address one So we'll be using these. These are the standard ones. We can always use the standard ones. There is no issue in using the standard ones. And also all of you use the text elements and change the parameter names. Okay, so we haven't actually changed the name. So it would be a good practice if you change these particular parameter names. So it's the same thing, go to text elements, you will find the para selection text. Those parameters I haven't activated, that's why we're not able to see, but whatever you act right and activate there, come here and change it. So now you can go to text elements. And here you could see, you could change this. I'm getting back. So we also need to do the data declaration part. So it will, okay, firstly I have to create this. Uh, I guess table type we, st we still didn't do right. So that's our next exercise. Yeah, we have deep structures and yeah, we have table types. Yeah, I have given table types also. Yes. And so we will work on creating table types for t table types. Uh, we will take some standard report, so standard table and we will use it. Okay. So here we can queue in. include and then we can give the structure name directly so here it is z so it has taken the first structure name so uh, you want me to add include or you want me to do a declaration so that you will see how we are adding the work area okay let me write like this then so here I will take the Z structure. Oh. So you can check it. The enhancement category, this is fine for now. So warnings, it will let us execute. Uh, we can activate it, but if there are errors, we are never supposed to activate even though errors exist because that will dump your programs. So with this include structure, all the fields of this include structure will be available in this structure itself. Whereas with address, you have to go there and navigate there. If you see with include structure, you can see the field names directly here itself. So let's have this as a work area and uh, so this is how we do the type declaration of a structure directly we'll also see how we can declare a work area using a table type so after that uh, what i'm trying to do was like do this If you see, I could all already see the fields here. Why I'm able to see is like I used control space. So those are the shortcut keys which we have 
said like using user specified systems we can do this so i have already declared this so it will identify the work area type as that particular structure and it is giving me these names automatically all of you did you follow this whatever i just said this is like the suggestions what we get shortcut suggestions did you get this i would ask i would ask you to follow the same use the shortcut key give control space it will show you the list of available words and using tab it will automatically select that particular word whichever you have selected even here it is showing the suggestion so using tab you can already give it so these are not in a formatted way one caps one small all like that so using pretty printer alignment will be done automatically so whatever i have given here i have not selected in the settings that's why these were not changed so these things were not changed because i have not given alignment for those if we select for those even then in that case they will also be automatically adjusted so whereas uh, for other address field you can't see the address fields you can only see address so you have to give address then again you can see the list of fields that are available for address i'm taking only serial number for now so the other shortcut key is like if you just go here and do a copy and automatically the same thing will appear that's a control d shortcut key so these are all useful for you know easy programming make it faster so after that using right statement we can add all the work areas so let's see what happen if i write the work area directly and not every field individually this in your exercise they would have asked you to write it individually is it yeah the right statement they are asking you to write individually but what i did here was i have directly given the structure so let's see for a rush so what it means is like the work area can't be converted to character like value so that is happening because this is a structure and we are directly trying to write the structure writing structure will not happen because it has a table format and it has like that single line format it will not able to identify what it has to write so that's why we are getting this errors so that's why we give the first name then i'll give last name then i'll give city so we already see the error message and let's identify why it is happening so it is stating that the syntax for this particular line is not valid so then we have to see identify that a space is missing over there so for every keyword and everything not have it. okay what does it have yeah so it has address and city and it is not having city directly so that's why it has given us this error message so let's again check for errors so now we don't have any error, error messages why because we have given each field value separately So, what so is this backspace? Yeah, we will we'll see it in the output. I want to show you that, so that's why I added it. Oh, okay. I'll show you in the output. Yeah. So that's first name easy. I'll take it as first, and last name I'll take as last. Take it then, and so here in uh, other program we have seen everything in a single line. So now we see everything in. one by new one line. line so yes so instead of using new line statement using backslash will automatically move that code into the next line so even though if you give new line on top and write everything and then you write new line it will not split whatever you have written in right statement so it will split the right path separately that means if you add new if i add new line here or after this if i add new line and if i write a write again okay so it will separate 
these values and these values, whichever you write in the second right, but it will not separate the values which you have already written in single right. So this is a shortcut key to write it. Instead of having multiple rights and new lines, you can use this backslash and directly give the value. This is how we can do it. Understood? Okay. Uh, All right, let's test your knowledge. Here's a question for you. What keyword is used for raising exceptions in ABAP? Option A, raise option B, throw, option C, catch option D, try. Take a moment to think and when you're ready, choose the correct option. Remember, each choice holds a key to unlocking the answer. Good luck. Type the correct answer in the comment section. Hey there, are you ready to dive into the world of SAP ABAP? Our self-paced course on our platform is your ticket to mastering this essential skill. In this course, you'll unlock the secrets of SAP ABAP, the language behind customizing SAP applications. Think of it as your toolkit for making SAP do exactly what you need it to do. Our curriculum covers everything from the basics to advanced techniques, crafted by seasoned experts who know the ins and outs of SAP ABAP like the back of their hand. Meet your instructor, a seasoned pro in the world of SAP, ready to guide you through every step of your learning journey and answer any questions you might have. But don't just take our word for it. Hear it from our satisfied students. They found our course invaluable in their journey to SAP mastery. And the best part, it's all at a price that won't break the bank. Quality training shouldn't come with a hefty price tag, and we've made sure of that. So, are you ready to level up your SAP skills? Don't miss out. Sign up now on our Teachable course page. And for more information, visit Zarin Tech's website below for full details on the training curriculum and formats. Uh, we'll quickly do this because we also have other, um, this would not take much time, I feel, because you already have parameters. Just take the work area, just pass the values. If not from parameters, you can hard code and part, pass them also. So it will be useful for our next steps. Um, using the keywords, whether you want it in the center, we can use something like centered, if not, okay, okay. So whatever we want to do. So if this is something that you want it in the center, we can use this keyword. And if you want it either that like right justified or left justified, you can use these keywords and you can add those. So for now I'll write this, I want it as right justified, add it as right justified. So this is how we write the statements. So we will add the alignments in this manner. So this is how the justification will be done. This will be the center. This will be the left, which is by default. And this is what we have now as right justified. So it will take the space based on it. If you want more space, we can add that L space as well. So however we want the look and feel, we will give that space line of. So consider this as 255 character line of. So from where it has to start. So this is all same like CSS formatting how we do. We have to consider check. This type is not existing. So I have directly entered Z mobile here. So instead of going and creating the data type from that first screen, if we enter here, even from here, but through this navigation, we can create it. So it will give this particular pop up asking us, like, do you want me to create it? If yes, then it will be going ahead saving this structure as is. So I'll save this structure to a local and I'm selecting data element. Okay, so domain, I didn't create any domain. So in that case, from here, if you create a domain, even in that case, it will take you to the domain. So this is the other approach without creating a domain. If I directly give the data type here and give a specified length, it will take it. So we can also try this. For now, we can give this. We can take 
a numerical text which only takes number characters and I want to give it as 10. Yeah, it's a quick approach, like rather than creating data elements, sometimes you want to create tables. So you'll add all the field names, you'll add the data elements, you'll directly double click on it. It will give the same page where you come after entering the create uh, name and click on create button on a C-level starting page. So instead of going for domain, domain is always suitable approach. Just to show how else we can add, I just have taken existing data type declaration. I'm saving it into local objects. So it always asks this why, because if we don't have this name, it will not show you anything in tables. So this is mandatory to give. So now uh, the Z mobile is done. If, if, so Z email, I'm creating one more. So if you see, this is not existing. So you would have created it. But if you have already created, check for the name and give. Suppose if you not have created, just add it, double click on it. So it will give you a pop-up saying like, do you want to create this type? So it is not specifying whether it is data element or anything. It is just asking us if we want to create that. So if it is not existing, it will give us that pop-up. So this is to save the structure. So select, create that pop-up, and you select what type you want to create, whether you want to create a data element, whether you want to create a structure, or whether you want to create a table deck. What you want the field over there. For now, I want it as data element. So I'll be selecting this. So, and then I'll be giving the email. And if you have a domain, use the domain. If you don't have a domain, then what I'm saying is like, you can directly, using reference type with built-in types, you can do. But that's not a suggestible approach. So how you can find the Z name asterisk, click on F4 help. That is the help what we get. And it will give you the list if there is anything with Z name. We didn't create with Z name. So you can view like this. So suppose I actually forgot what is the domain name that has been created, but I remember there is some character domain. So I will give this and just click on enter. It will give you the list of characters that has been created. So this domain I want to select, I want to select it as a character itself. So, and then, so it's better to maintain the field label. It's okay if you give the same name for all. It doesn't restrict us, but sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes if you have a bigger name and if you want to have a shortcut key for it, that's where you use this. You can execute both at a time. So for now, I have only added these two. So this is active. Okay, so now we will create the first data uh, table type and use the structure inside it. So I will rename it as uh, Z. You can take a naming convention, whichever you like. I will take it as TT for table type, and then I'll create the table type. So for table type, are you taking a line type? Are you taking a built-in type? or whatever we are taking, we can declare those here. So, table type for four. Okay, so we have these attributes, the type, line type, line type is like of what table you want to take, how many number of rows you want, and what type of primary key and secondary key we are specifying. So in our exercises, they have also given us how we can. So uh, will you parallelly start or all of you would start afterwards? Yeah, so this is the one that I have created. I would request all of you to keep this and start creating the table type. Go to EC11, add your table type name and click on table type afterwards. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but then follow the steps so that we can do it as is. So, whichever is comfortable for you. So here, this is the table type they wanted to create. So that's why they were selecting the table type. So here, 
This is the initialization and access tab page and select the standard type. So this we already have it as standard, right? Here they have mentioned like select the standard table as access type. That's by default selected. So they are just specifying and showing up what are they like? What type of table is this? Do you want it as a standard table, sorted table? In most of our cases, we don't use any other table. Whatever tables we are using is just to have the data. So this is a phone number. So it is fine if it is a standard table. So that's why we go for standard table. So and then in primary key tab, if you are having any primary key, that means a mandatory key that is necessary, then we will specify that key. Here, we are as of now taking it as a non-unique key. So in general case for mobile number, it is suggestible to go with the unique key, but we are not creating a real time table. So that's why they have given us to continue with a non-unique key. And the next one they have mentioned is like choose standard key as key definition. So this is what will be selected by default and then they are saving it. So we are not having primary key, we will not be having secondary key also. So the secondary comes in picture once you add the primary key and then we'll get it. So they are asking us to create this. So here they have specified us to use this existing structure which we have created. Whatever I have created, I will add that here. So this is where we specify our tables or our structures. So now this is available. So for creating deep structure, we'll take this table type, whichever we have created, and we will edit it in the existing structure itself. So here, how we will specify the table is this is the table type which you have created and then we will create a new component like phone and we will add it. If you are adding it like a new component like phone, so and you give it directly, you have to always specify phone and then add the content. So do you see the difference? If it is a single line, it is given one row. If it is multiple lines, it is given stable. So this means only one row will be there. This means it will have multiple rows for the multiple columns. And then activate this. So once all of you activate this, we will enhance the existing structure and see the output. So this is the existing structure. So now this has been enhanced. So we don't need to modify it whatever you want to pass. So you can directly pass it from here. If you see now we'll get phone also. See, we got phone. This has been added now. And then we don't we should get mobile automatically. Let's see why it is not switching. It's active, right? I activated it, right? It's active. It's active. Uh, okay, so uh, in the declaration, we have directly added it. So this considers like a header field. On to table, you can't directly pass something. So it considered as a table field and if I'm try directly trying to pass the value onto the field, it will give us this error message. So we will, you know, write the code like W A person, this table without a default key or with a default key. So we will change the declaration at the data level. That's when it will consider it as single point of like single deep structure. So they have taken the Z person, whichever we have created it. They have created the same one. They have enhanced the same one, the same structure which we have created. And they just created another 
table type for it, they have taken a different data type. They didn't add it in the person. They have taken a different data type and they are inserting it. So if we want to do it in a same one, then we will use default key keyword. So firstly, we'll follow this, then we will work on the default key keyword as well. So we are taking... phone. <coughs> See struct underscore phone, I guess. STR underscore phone, I guess. STR underscore phone. It's more than than is it? Numerical characters, this is. Let me see why we are getting this error message. Okay, so we are having a deep structure for that. It is taking numc 130. Mm, okay. Let me check why I'm not able to get this directly. It's not necessary, we have to declare a parameter for it. So if we declare a parameter, we can take the parameter type. I guess the format I am giving is wrong. I'm also not able to really think of it, sorry for that. But the format I'm giving is actually not a right format. So that's why it is giving that. So type compatibility. So what does type compatibility mean? So whatever we give like this, if this value type, the numerical character is not good for passing it as an integer, then we will get this. This is a type compatibility issues. So we, in this general case, if we want to convert it, you can use this code, but I also want to check why it is not taking it. So what happens with this is like, it converts oh. a specified key into its required format. Yeah, so this means it is not taking the type whatever we are giving in the same manner. So it could be because uh, the character type which we have used is an issue. So the numc character is causing an issue. Uh, I'm, I'm also confused. Let me check why it is causing this issue. This one specific component. With my type declaration.
Okay, you have created, yeah. And you have you activated this? Yeah, it is active. Yes. You could see on uh, table type name, it's active, yeah. Table type name. Just Ta starting table type name, that's the IT phone number, yeah. So now get back to SC11 screen, open your old structure, which you have created as Z person. You would have it there already. Uh, yeah, open that Z person. Change it, yes. Uh, so here you have to add like phone because you those are the phone details. Yeah, enter and give the component name directly. Just paste it. You can go with include also and you can go with this also. We'll go with this approach for now. Enter. Now this will automatically come up. So uh, if most of you are back, I'll show you what is the mistake uh, that has been done and then how it can be fixed. So I guess most of you are back. Uh, so you can lower your hats. I'll show you what was missed and then you can continue. Okay, then you can also make the change once I show you what has been done. Yeah, you can stop sharing. So what I did was I was thinking that my data declaration and all was fine Why I was getting that error message. Now if we see here, we're not getting any error message. So the mistake I have done was while creating, oh no. okay, I did all tab and I'm forgetting to create the user for me. Honest, for your system, you guys have any user that has not been used? You not know, right? They directly give you only RVP, I guess, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let me show you. So I'll directly go to SC11. So while creating the structure, while giving the data types, I have to consider it as C. Now I can see this. If you see in Digital's one, which one we have created initially, we can't see this. I'll tell you why it happened. Instead of giving the built-in data type, I have given the reference data type. So what is a reference is like, it's like um, in class we refer the objects, right? So if we have a reference data type, then my declaration should also change in the same manner. I'll show you how it has to be there if it is a reference data type. So that's a mistake that has been done. If something is called reference, then how we represent it changes. Instead of representing it directly like this, we have to represent it in this manner if it is reference data type. But let's not go for reference data types. We use reference data types in classes and objects and declaring those. Then we will see about it. Let's go for the generate data type and let's work on it. Uh, Gerida, in the meantime, can you also please change it? Select the elementary type itself and itself and instead of domain, select built-in type and add it as numc and 10. You'll get the warnings. Those can be ignored because you have already used this data element. You'll get that warnings. Uh, because it is ECC system. It's an older version. This is an HANA system. So that's the difference. That's still the old systems. That's what they have provided us. OK, thank you so much. So this was the miss which we have done. So and now after, so it is a table type, we can do multiple, right? So what I do now is using the insert keyword, I'll take this phone number and I'll insert it into WA person's phone, okay? So what I'm doing basically here was I'm taking the structure and then, okay, this is not a problem. This, this is a warning because we are directly inserting it. That's why it is happening. That is fine. And if a person is having multiple phone numbers, we can enter multiple values. So we are inserting each line into this work area. And then how we have to do, so now that work area has a built-in structure, we can loop that particular work area screen. What is person's phone? Because this is a table type. 
and taking it into another work area. So that work area can be of type 4. So if we go and uh, see here, they are looping this particular one into the phone, the same work area which we have used to append. And if you want to ensure that there is no existing entry, you can use a clear statement and clear the work areas. So using the clear statement, we clear the values which you have passed. So now whichever value you newly pass, if newly pass, only that particular value will be there. So now in this, I want to use a right statement. And I want to display the work area form. And you can give it up. Uh, were you able to follow? All of you were you able to follow? Do you understand what we are doing in the loop? Uh, please let me know if you have any doubts because we will be following the same. So this this warnings we are getting why because we are directly trying to insert something. So the implicit index was specified to modify, delete, or insert in a row. So this is where we are try directly trying to directly trying to append it. So that's why we are getting it. Okay, so th this loop is nothing but to write. It's just to display. Let's not get confused display. with it. So generally, uh, we will yes. not do this. We will not do this and loop it. So what we do is like we'll do a select and then we loop it and then we'll display. So this we are not doing this. This is just for a practice purpose. So loop would not be necessary if we are passing it from here itself, but instead of taking it from a table, we are doing it. Once we create the tables, then we will work on that as well. So maybe for now, we'll first practice this. If this is done, then I can start with the next exercise also. If, if this is clear to everyone, you can keep practicing. You can use this program as reference and you can practice this. And then uh, we can work on the table types now and we'll start with the actual dictionary tables also today. Okay, so the clear statement why I have used was, so here I am appending some details onto work area phone, right? So this clear statement will clear the content of this. So this is a keyword. This is like when you are looping something, if you want to ensure that there is no data inside it, suppose, I mean, in this scenario, we are just appending on top and we are declaring, but in real time scenarios, how it will be is like, you will fetch the data and uh, you will not insert the data and loop it. You will fetch the data on the data which you have fetched, you loop. And the work area, if you don't want previous in existing entry, in that particular work area for that runtime, we'll use a clear statement. It's basically clearing the values of that line or work area or variable, whatever you have. If I, if I clear this, then there will be nothing to do. It will become blank. So that's why wherever you're taking this value into, that's what, that is the one I'm clearing. If we are clear with this, if you can go ahead and repeat even later, we can start with the table types using the real time table, which is S flight. Are we all good with this? If any of you still have issues, do let me know, or you want to practice once and then, or else we can, you know, cover this this one, this exercise. So this is where we have the select statements, simple select statements, which we can work on. I want to see to the statement. Sorry, I just got disconnected and connected. Uh, yeah. Okay, Let's so generally we will not, will not hard code and pass. Whatever we do, we'll save every data onto a table. So that's what uh, is the next session. We'll explain to you about tables. So we have an existing table in the table type scenario. I'll show you an existing table and how the data is saved in it. So we will fetch 
using select queries will fetch from those tables with one statement with one loop if you want some modifications if you want some updations it depends on the request and need from the customer that's how we modify we will not append the data multiple times we also have options like excel uploads csv file upload so if customer gives you data we will upload that we will directly upload it we will not make individual entries okay so uh, we will see about the runtime errors also so firstly let me check where i have missed Okay, I didn't use the index, so it is trying to append into the same line, I suppose. Check. Yeah. So the statement I have missed here was using the table in it, so it is not able to identify it. So it is considering it like directly onto the. work area of it but it is actually table type inside it so this is where this is the step which has been missed so that's why it is dumping for us but tell me is more than just the so here after this i didn't give new line so that's why it got appended next to it whereas for this we have new line so that's why it got appended next sorry and then thank you because i didn't add the table so this is missing because it is table type and we have to mention because it's a structure and inside the structure we have a table so we have to specifically mention the table so if it is directly into table if it is not a work area instead of work area if it is a table we don't need to specify table again it will only append these two so if the third field is a mandatory field then it will cause issue while you are inserting it because mandatory field is not updated insert is like a hard coding it so if it is not a mandatory field here we haven't specified any primary key and secondary key fields right in that case it will not cause any issues so if there is an any extra column i'll i'll take off this email okay in both the cases i'll take off this email it will not cause any issue for us now it will only append so email will if i try to write an email it will be blank because we are not appending any email see only these oh. two work Okay, those are the phone numbers. It will not cause any issue because those are not mandatory fields. Um, shall we start with table type creation? Yeah. So this one is the deep structure one. We have covered this. The next one would be this, which is. table type creation from the standard table so they are creating a table type from this z flight table i'll firstly show you what this table is like so this is the table so this is the table which they use for having the flight flight details flight code all this this table has been used from very very long time and for all the practice purposes also even the same thing has been used so if we see we will be already these are the fields of this table so how the table output looks like is like on execute of it you will see the list of entries and values of that particular table so these this is how the table looks like so this we will cover in next part so firstly we will create a table type using this particular table so this is what the key field means here see key field this is what the key field means that means they are the mandatory and primary key fields so what all can be having an initial values all the fields were selected as they will be having the initial values so that means you can't enter something without a value so let's create a table type and you can name it as cs flight 
to test S flight table will give this particular table. So they have followed the same thing. They have created it with Z S flight. And what they have done afterwards is like, they have created a program using this one. So here we do have primary keys for this table. So for that's the purpose, they have added the primary keys onto the table. So here on primary key tab page, you can see that they have selected the relevant ones. So here they want to specify few key components and they have taken the ID. So if you see, you can find the list of values on the particular table which you have used. So they have taken the carrier ID of that particular flight as a key component and then they have saved it. So this has been activated. So here in the other case, we haven't specified any key components because we don't have any key fields. So that's why we kept it as the standard key one. So here we have specified one particular key component. Now afterwards, what they are trying to do in our program is like, they are trying to create a program, declare it with a table type and also a work area type and then they are trying to fetch the values based on carrier ID. Instead of passing this hard coded, we'll take a parameter and then we will pass it via the parameter. And then we will use the write statement. So this is how the select statements will be used to fetch the details. So in general practice, we will not use this ABAP first program practice. So I'll create a different program and um, name it as flight. So in data data declarations, firstly, I am taking this empty flight. So the type of our table is whatever table type you have created. So this is this is what we call it as internal table. We'll study on for the classes also for the internal table. So internal tables are type of the tables which you have created. <coughs> We also create them with the standard tables, but if you have some modifications or anything, we can use the table type declarations also. So here you could see that for table internal table, they have taken the table type, whereas for work area, they have taken the direct database table. So instead of using this, I will use So work area, you will directly give the table name. Whereas if it is an internal table, then how you will specify it, how else you can specify it is, I'll take, uh, you know, you can type it as type table of S flight. Even, even this is how you can do a declaration. Okay, so now what they are doing is like, I'll have a parameter for now. So we can take the type of uh, carrier ID. So th this has a data element type, right? So I'm taking the same. So now uh, this is the first select query we are trying on ABAP. So this is the same SQL query we use. So how the select queries work is like, we will write the select keyword first, okay? And if you want to fetch all the fields, we'll give it asterisk. So from whichever table you want, you will select that from, I want to select it from S flight. And into what I have to, I have to give the internal table, whichever I have created here. 
So if we have some conditions, we will add a where condition and we will write the field name. And here for now, I'm specifying the work area I have created. So if you don't want complete details and if you only want specific fields, I want to take maybe these IDs, okay? I also want carrier ID. So we will specify all these fields with space, just with space, okay? This is how we will take it. So with this, you will get all the fields into this L flag. So there are some system variables. Okay. There is this uh, restriction, so that's why it is not taking it. Oh, the same statement I have again missed into the table. Nice. What did I miss? Carry. Okay, I missed mandate. Okay, when we declare the table types directly, we have to specify all the key fields. If we are not specifying all the key fields, then it will it will fetch, so it will compare. The self flight is directly type of this. It will check first field to mandate. It will take it to save. If you don't want all the fields, and if you want to specify only few fields, in that case, we have to declare this differently. This data declaration will itself modify. So let's take the same and see what happens if I take an asterisk. So here, it will not cause any issue because it will fetch all the fields. So I'll not take L flight again, I'll take L flight one. So we also have these statements with if, what the system variables will do is like, they will check whether we have the values existing or not. So that's why we use this size of RC. Size of RC means the system variable will check what kind of output it has given. It is zero means yes, it has fetched the values. It is four means no, it has not fetched the values. So there are the zero, four, eight, and so on values, system variable values that will help you to identify whether it is given the expected output or not. So now, now we are not appending anything and we are directly getting the values into L flight and L flight one separately. We can loop them. So I can uh, take L P flight and I want to take it into work area, LS flight. So you can use write statement here and you can specify all the fields or whatever you want to display. So you can compare it with us. So we have followed the same. They have they have taken it into work areas and they have directly. So they have not taken it into tables, they have taken it into work areas and they have directly appended the work area here. So if you are taking it into table work area means you get only single line. So you have to use either select up to one line or select and end it with end select because you are using work area. The second scenario is taking it into a table and then they are looping and printing all the values one by one. So these are the two approaches, whereas in the in view I have taken directly like this. So in LS flight, I don't have the other fields. So if you see, I'll take one more field which I have not declared. Okay. Mm, maybe take this. Some. Okay, this will be blank, whereas in LS flight one,
we will have this field enabled. Okay, so don't get confused over there. It is only one select statement, one is necessary. I have written two select statement to show how we can fetch all the fields using asterisks or how we can fetch required fields. I mean, only few fields like this by entering the field names. Please, I'm individually entering each field name. Here, I'm using asterisks and getting all the field names. Instead of this, uh, I would suggest all of you write a select query with asterisk itself, not into table, but directly into work area and write using write statement you can display and use with asterisk into table and loop it and write. So I'm showing you different approaches. That's all. You can have it as approach one or approach two. So how it works for work area is we'll not take it into table. So we'll take it into LSS flight directly and we have to end the select also with end select. Why? Because you're taking a single line. So inside this, you will write. So this is how it works for work area. So in work area, you will directly get it. You don't need to loop anything or because it is only a single field. Did, did you get it? Uh, in work area, it will only pick one row, whichever it gets. Whereas in this, in this table, okay? If it is a table, let me pick this one. If it is a table, okay? If I write this, it will pick all 94 entries and it will display mm -hmm. all 94 entries. You can see that also. Without way condition, it will pick everything. Okay. Let me see. It ended. Oh, okay, sorry. There is no period. So that's why it gave me the error. Uh, so if you want to see the content, I will show you now. So this will call it as a debugging screen, but we will be using this in further classes. So this is the for help I was saying about because this already has list of entries. It has taken those particular entries and you can see all those. So let us pick the first one. I will explain you about this debugger screen in our next class itself. So here, this LT flight has six entries with that with a different multiple flight dates. Okay, because you have only considered carrier ID. If you see LT flight one, it has all the ninety-four entries in respect of carrier ID. So multiple carrier ID, the same carrier ID, you have multiple entries. So this is how it will work. See, this is how it will display the data. This is how it has displayed the work area data or the first entries. And afterwards, from here, you could see the 94 table entries. This is the first work area output. So this is the first uh, table output. The first, this row. This is the work area output. This is the table output. This is the list of 94 entries output. So this is the work area output. Similarly, here I'll write like table one, okay. Here I'll write like table two. Instead of uh, having in direct entry, I just use parameter. You can directly pass a value without parameter and can also check. So this is for table one from here. And from here, it is for all the 94 entries of a table two. So if this is clear, uh, you could practice on this and then uh, we can go ahead with the uh, data dictionary tables and we'll have a practice exercise later.
Unless you want to practice this, or what, what, what's the approach you want to go with? Anyone? We will move on to the next approach. So all of you were able to understand? Is it OK for you if I go to the next topic? Can we go to the other topic? We have covered this. So now we will discuss about the ABAP dictionary. The next topic is the database tables. Yes, uh, so what I would suggest is like practice it. And if you face any issues, collect those issues and come back to me, we will work on that. So for now, we will start with the database tables and we'll work on the exercise in the next session. I hope that would be okay for you all. So uh, uh, the next topic is on data. In transfer, we have already seen how we include structures. So one of the topic is already covered, the same thing. However, you have included in structures, we will include in database tables also, whichever you want to create your custom database tables. So creating tables, we will also see what this are and how these work. So the structure of the objects that you have created in previous examples will be used for mapping them onto tables. So a database table can have multiple structures, like however we have created. A table just doesn't have one thing, like the name, the address, the phone number, the details, so many other details, like whatever equipment the person is having, whatever the allocations have been done to that one person, like the employees, all these details will be stored in tables. So each attribute of those structure will correspond to each field of the table. So we have also seen in a slide example that there are multiple fields. So what are fields means there are nothing but the columns and we have rows. So table will have multiple rows and structures will have single row. So multiple rows are nothing but the number of entries in that table. And the table has a different name that is from structure. Even though it is a table and this is a structure, it can't have the same name. If you follow the same name, it will be difficult for it to identify whether it is a table or a structure. And we have few properties in the table which we maintain by default. That means what type of table is this? Who can maintain this table? So those are the attributes, like how we have seen in our report in the starting page, there are some attributes. In a similar manner, we do have it for our tables as well. And we have seen some fields like key fields. Just in one of our examples, we have considered the carrier ID as a key, campo, key component. And we have also seen that there are multiple fields which are primary key fields. Based on the need and the, based on the purpose of the table, there can be single or multiple key fields. In a similar manner, we can also have a secondary index and secondary fields. So there is values of key fields must be unique. Suppose if you have only one key field, that is your employee ID is a key field. Employee ID has to be unique for everyone. If not like that, you are not having employee ID. If you're having two different names, if you take names, so consider name and last name as two unique fields. So that means a person can have same name, same first name, but not same last name. There are cases that the person will have same first name and same last name. In that case, the other key identification will be another field like ID or you have to give some other specification. Like while they create your emails, if a person is having same first name and last name, that's why they append 01028. So that means that's how the uniqueness is identified for these. So all the key fields together, we call them as primary key fields. So coming, this is how we have the key fields and function fields. So function fields means taking the employee as an example. Suppose consider that we are giving equipment to all the employees, equipment like your laptops. So take two people, two people can have uh, different names and different IDs, but we'll be giving the same 
laptop to them with a different idea of the laptop but the equipment all together the model is same let's not go deep into the id serial number that will again be unique but the model is same so if you have the same model then you will say or else the person belongs to same project two different people will belong to same project in that scenario the key fields will be the employee id and employee name the functional fields will be the fields that keeps on changing or the fields that are different because your laptop keeps on changing every 3 years your name will not change your id and until and unless you are in the same family will not change your name until and unless you plan to change it will not change so the function is the project the project which you are in you may change the project the equipment may change or if there are given any other specifications all this would change based on the Need or based on the activity. So, if you take a real time example, the flight, the carrier ID, all this will not change. But few fields like the travel time or the date, so they are not standard. Today it will move, tomorrow it will change, the day after tomorrow it will change. Whereas the ID given for that will never change. So, what are these tables and what are the domains? So, a transparent table is basically used to define the database tables at database system. So, whatever table you create will automatically be created as a database table. And also, we will save the data. Like I have shown you on a slide, there are list of entries, right? That's how we we'll create the entries, and that's how we will save the entries. And all these entries will be automatically reflected back in the backend system. And domains, we have already discussed about data elements and domains. So I don't want to stretch more on this. But in domain, I have shown something called value field. On top of it, we have something called value rate. If you want to fix some values for your database tables and you don't have want to have too many values, that's when you will specify these particular. The value can be only in this particular range. Sorry. Okay. So we have already read about data elements, and also I would like to skip this particular part of data elements. On domain concepts, we have. Specifically, they have taken the same S flight model and they are considering this thing eight port platform prem and eight platform two. So it is like we are having two different data elements, but they are using the standard. This is similar to our first name, second name. And this, too, this, this part is similar to that. So this I'm moving ahead. So transparent table and structures, how these can be used in structures. In structure, we create this table type and similarly we'll create this structure with the same field name so here you could see that structure all right let's test your knowledge here's a question for you which built-in ABAP function can be used to convert data types option a move option b convert option c change option d modify take a moment to think and when you're ready Choose the correct option. Remember, each choice holds a key to unlocking the answer. Good luck. Type the correct answer in the comment section. Hey there, are you ready to dive into the world of SAP ABAP? Our self-paced course on our platform is your ticket to mastering this essential skill. In this course, you'll unlock the secrets of SAP ABAP, the language behind customizing SAP applications. Think of it as your toolkit for making SAP do exactly what you need it to do. Our curriculum covers everything from the basics to advanced techniques, crafted by seasoned experts who know the ins and outs of SAP ABAP like the back of their hand. Meet your instructor, a seasoned pro in the world of SAP, ready to guide you through every step of your learning journey and answer any questions you might have. But don't just take our word for it. Hear it from our satisfied students. They found our course invaluable in their journey to SAP mastery. And the best part, it's all at a price that won't break the bank. Quality training shouldn't come with a hefty price tag, and we've made sure of that. So, are you ready to level up your SAP skills? Don't miss out. Sign up now on our Teachable course page. And for more information, visit Zarentech's website below 
for full details on the training curriculum and formats. Definition is also used for defining data objects in the programs. We have also done this one, right? Using one structure, we have declared that is WA person. In the previous example, I have also declared a work area using the table directly. So table definition is created physically in the database. That means whatever table you create in your SE level database table that will have or will be reflected onto database table automatically. So on a bar program, we can use this transparent table like you can access that the data that is there in this table with the SQL statement or you can use the structure type and then with that also we can use. So there is also a chance that the order of these fields that are in above this data dictionary can be different from the fields of the database. So that's why we will be inserting new fields without converting the table. So whenever you add a new field, the system will automatically adjust those fields by changing it as per the database catalog. So if you have the sequence different, you just need to map it to the correct field. That is all what we have to do. It will pick. So that means after this, this is country FR, but here if you have FL rate. So you will pass this value to the structure and you will append this. So you will use new corresponding fields and with the corresponding values, it will be appended directly. So uh, we also have something called technical settings onto tables. So what does that mean, table buffers? So what is the size of your table? Is it too big or what, what does that mean? All we see into the technical settings. So I'll open the technical settings and I will show you what does it mean. So when we create a database table, automatically it will determine and keep this. We can change this if we have any different size or different data class, data class or storage, it depends based on the need. Even the buffering can be defined in the same manner, whether we need to change it or not. So how the database fragments and database tables are saved? So it's based on the size. So if you have everything as size zero, then everything will be saved here. If you have a couple of as size one and size two, one as size zero. So the space on how the database takes care is called as table space. The table space is generally used in Oracle and it's the storage area in database. And we don't exclusively work on how the space have been saved. We will only categorize them into different sizes to use them. So the regular database maintain and all this reorganization will solve those. We don't as a developer manually do any of these activities. So that's why the fragmentation of this table and saving of this table is not done by us. So what we generally do is like we split those tables into master data, into organization data, into transactional data, and into system data. So master data is something which will not be changed frequently. Transactional data is something that will keep on changing. Organization data is something that will be changed very lately. And system database data is changed based on the runtime. So coming to the fragment, so to reduce the fragmentation of database table, the solution what we are going with is what I have just said now. We're considering the table into master, transactional, organization, and so on. So during the rebuild process, this SAP system will create a new table and transfer all this data into that table. So once the system deletes the old and fragmented table, it will replace it with a new one. Suppose the table data has been grown and you haven't planned for it. So in that case, you should come back to your dictionary and you have to adjust the size. So, and once you adjust the size, now you can have more data. Suppose you have restricted your table initially saying like, I have only 1,000 records, but in future you got 10,000 records. Then you have to change the size of your table that is adjustable for 10,000 records. So this fragmentation would be required to adjust the size category and data class, whether it belongs to the small one or whether it belongs to large data one, whether what kind of data it is. 
So we have also specified about the data classes. So this is how we have the data classes defined. So among them, the top priority one were master data, transactional data, and all these. So very rarely modified ones like the name, address, and other details. As a transactional data or frequently modified ones, here they have taken an example of the warehouse. That's where they have considered the material stock. Organization data is we will have it when we customize it when the systems are modified. So this will also be seldomly modified. So for example, the country keys where this um, warehouse belongs to, it won't be modified every day, but if it keeps on going, then it will be modified. System data is what that is relevant to SAP system, and those are like system configurations. So these are dependent on the customer. So if the customer is saying like, this is how I want my system to be, this is how I want to see the data, this is how I want few fields, and I don't want uh, everyone to access few fields, all this we will do the configuration at system level. So we have also specified about the size category, if whether, whether it will be initial Tab A, Tab B, Tab C, we have taken in three categories, size one, two, three. So size one would be small, size two would be the bigger one, size three would be the larger one. It's like whether you have 1,000, 10,000, one lakh, it depends on size of or number of rows, you can say. Based on that, the memory has to be increased, so, which means the space must be available for the table to grow. So that's how we will adjust this and work on those. So, Logging the data changes. If someone has changed the data, then how that activity will be logged? For example, in one of the in, in our today's class itself, we have seen that who have cha last changed. So all these details are system details that were being saved under the table. So this, why do we need the log details. So we can use this logging to record and store the changes that were made onto tables. Suppose you have entered one table entry. Someone came and someone has changed the entry. If you have this change documents, if you have this logged on data, it will be easy for you to track. And for us to activate this logging, we have to select a checkbox called log data changes in our technical settings. Like we will see this when we create a table. So by enabling this fact, you are enabling the users to see who else can change or who have already changed it. So these are some examples of it. The data modifications on logged or independently of update. And we can display the logs with table history as well. This is one of the transaction to see what has been modified on the table level. So the settings can be so to, to see the parameter changes on table level. If it is client all, all clients can see. If we are specifying to only specified clients, then it will be this triple O. And if it is completely set to off, then logging itself is not right at all. Oh. So we also have given access via Java. So when someone is making the modifications via front end like QI5, Fury and all, they'll create the Java scripts and they will send it to backend. So even with Java, now we can modify the table entries. It's not always just with ABAP. And if we are writing ABAP, how we have used the insert statement to insert one line into work area, we will use same kind of insert and update onto tables. For custom tables, you can use insert and update, whereas for standard tables, we will never use insert and update. We have existing function modules which perform these activities. They will perform the relevant validations. They will give us the errors if we are doing anything wrong. And that's when they update. If not, if it is our custom table, then we have to get all the details from our client saying like what kind of data you want, how you want to update the data, what are the restrictions, what are the validations, when can I insert? Because insert is like you're forcefully entering a value onto a table. So that's the reason we should be extremely careful when we are using this insert, modify, update, delete onto the tables. So, and if we are writing the ABAP in ACI data, then it can be read from Java side as well. So, uh, 
this is the further details on um, how we can create and how the technical settings exist and all, uh, how the relational database is two dimensional, like how the cells are organized in rows and columns. Columns are nothing but the fields we have seen. I'll show you the S right, we clearly understand and then we'll create one. So how we have multiple rows, multiple columns like per employee on your excel sheet you'll have columns right those are the same those are the same on our database tables also so each record will be one entry so in the same manner we will have multiple records added so this is for the details on s4 hana but presently we are concentrating on sap ecc because we all got the same system the initial one was actually sap hana but further as uh, this would this is then another database. HANA is another database. So they would have built it on a different database for ECC. So it depends on how we have. So how whether it is a column store or row store, it, it to understand that in this, it is by default a column store. So each column, whatever entry you have given, it will be added. So we can change this uh, settings under SE 11, which are related to database specific properties, but these are not completely relevant to that. So uh, this covers the transparent tables part. Okay, let me also quickly explain you what a cluster table and what a pool table is. We are not using it in real time. I just want to give you a definition on what cluster table is. So in cluster tables, we will store such kind of data. Those are functionally dependent data. That means it's not saved in one table, multiple. What is a cluster? Can someone define me what is a cluster? In general English, what is a cluster? Yeah, a cluster means it's something which all come together, right? It's a cluster. What do you call it as a cluster? Yeah, it's a kind of collection, basically. Yes, so uh, we also have these groups and all, right? Uh, even we have, um, we call them as a cluster. Why do we call the groups as a cluster? Because they all have something which are functionally dependent. They would have some dependent topics. So they say like this is a cluster one, cluster two, cluster three. So they're working on one object view. So they are performing for one thing. Even the database tables are doing the same thing. So that means the data is divided among different database, different tables, but in turn it reflects onto one table. So whereas there will be this intersection that is made on the key fields of this table. So that's why they are specified as cluster tables. And the key of these cluster tables is called as cluster key. We, we are not basically mostly working on the cluster tables, but we concentrate only on transparent tables. Similarly, what is a pool table? Okay, so pool table is not exactly a cluster table, rather it is an opposite to a cluster table. It is opposed from cluster table. You know, it stores the records that are from different tables into a BAP dictionary that are not at all dependent. Whereas cluster is having dependent and pool is having those things which are not dependent. And we want to combine those. So pooling, if you take an example, if you go somewhere, we will say like, let's pool in and let's have some party or let's pool in and let's have some lunch. So let's pool in and have a dinner together. So we are different kinds of items are pulled together similar in a similar manner even on the tables pool tables or something that are of different that are not dependent but they come together and they perform the activities based on the need so these are the two simple definitions to keep in mind what a cluster and pool tables are but we will be working on transparent tables so this is what is a transparent table, what we are talking about. So once we create the table, so if your customer needs a table, he will give you all the details of what our fields he needs. Maybe he would give an Excel or maybe he would say, this is how I want the data, this is how I want a table. So you get the all information from him and you will ask him, what does each field mean? What is the length of each field? Which fields are unique? So once you get this all, all this information, you will create the fields like this. So what is mandate means? Mandate means the client. 
So I have logged into A4 as 001. So this mandate field is the client in which this table exists. So this table will have different values in different clients. So every time you create and create an entry, it will be different. In the same system, we'll have multiple clients. So like 001, I'll have 000, 002, and multiple systems. All this would be four. Like I said, in quality and production also, right? This will not be existing. Once you create in development, the entries will not be there either in test system or in production system. No, everywhere you have to create them individually. Until and unless if someone says like, transport the ones, I want the ones which you have created in your development system, in my production system, only that's when you transport it. Generally, we will only transport it till test system. From development system, we would never transport it to production because production is real-time usage. And then that's where the customers work on with the, their customers, right? So they don't let you pass any data. If there is necessity, only in that case we do. But generally, here we develop and we'll check. In test system, they'll test the data. And production system, they'll use the data. So here, once you get the, all the details, we'll create all the data elements and all the fields. So here in this scenario, we have multiple key fields. That means with same carrier ID, with the same airlines, there can be different flight connection number. So, and the flight date would be different. So we will see the entries once again. This. I can see at least this keeps me locked in. See, <clears throat> see, you can see the uniqueness between carrier ID and uh, this flight oh, connection ID. This is connection ID. Triple A zero zero one seven. But what is the difference? The difference is the flight date, right? Whereas again, the price, the currency, the plane type, the seats, all these are same. Seats of seats occupied is varying. You know, know for these many seats, how much the payment has been done? Has been done. And there are more fields that has been occupied here. How much payment has been done? So this is how the entries look like. So how many balcony seats? Are, all these details for this occupancy. So these are all the functional fields, basically. This keeps on changing. So we add this carrier ID, all these fields, this don't keep changing. This will be standard. Even this will be changing. But whereas the price can be constant and it can increase never. Never the flight prices are same. They are always fluctuating. So this is a functional field in the currency types based on the country type. It will be fixed. So that is how the fields and the entries will look like. Now I'm getting on to the technical settings. Let's first see the attributes. This is how I said, like, we can see who have changed it and where it has been saved. So whether this is master table, transactional table. So application table is basically the same, so many other types, master and transaction data, whether you are having it for customizing and this will only be done by customer. In that case, it would be customizing. Whether you're storing temporary data onto it or however you want it, all those details, this is the system table. All this specification can be done through this particular delivery class. And what can be performed on this table? So this is where you could see other details, whether anyone can see it and maintain it, and whether no one can see it and maintain it. With restrictions, means there will give authorization restrictions to it. These are all the other categories. This is the field check. And what are those input check and help means that means so mandate it's by default t triple zero that means the client details will all saved in this sap standard table so carrier id so you can't give random carrier ids for this transaction table you will have a master table you will pick from those master table so here this is the check table that will be given if you want to restrict it so it has carrier ID, the name, what is the currency code, 
all the details of that particular carrier ID. So we have seen the AAA, AL, all those. So these are the standard ones we generally don't change. So we are referring so that I said like validation, you have to ask your customer what validations I have to do. So he would say like, create another table, save all these data and validate. And only if the entries are existing in that table, then only let the user add the entries onto the flight table. So that's when we would add that input help and check. So only if it is valid in that case, it will be added. So these will be added based on the customer need. If you have any currency fields, even in that case, we will mention that these are currency fields so that it can take the specific currency formats. So the field they have referenced here is the currency field of this particular table. It will refer to the currency field. The next one I want to show you is the technical settings. So only once you create and enable these technical settings, you will be able to create, make entries, edit entries, do all this. For today, I'll explain you on creating this table and tomorrow we will complete the table and we'll create the entries onto the table. So this is what the data class we are discussing about. So it has like application one, which is for master and transparent table, application zero for transactional tables. So organization tables, these are all the ones. So we will go with the master data and transparent tables for now. So that's where they have selected, oh no, this is transactional data. So that's where they have selected one. So if it is master data, then we will select zero. If it is transactional data, then we will select one. So size category, so you can clearly see so they are saying like they are only assuming 5,400. So here dot is like comma for us, comma separator for us. So because it's on the standards, we can change the specification also. So if your category starts from zero to 5,000 records, then you will go. If your category starts minimum from 5,000 records, this is the size category. So based on the size, you are assuming that the number of entries you're getting, you will pick the size category and this can be changed in future also and you have to change it and activate it. And the other things were like log changes. If we select the log changes, that's when you can see who has changed anything on the table. And the buffering type, whether the buffering on the table is allowed or whether the buffering option is not given. So the buffering is required. If you are using that, if it has mass entries and if you want to update it, if you are doing an, any you know, frequent activity like um, updating it, changing it, using it in a job or something like that. So the buffer would need if it has to load the data parallelly. So those are the examples. We also have some other restrictions like authorization restrictions. This is what we generally have it. It is all fist columns too. If you have a different based on the need, we will have it whether it is a row store or an, it can be anything if it is undefined. So, but we generally go for column store approach. So once you come and create the technical settings, you actually have to activate the technical settings, go back to the table, and activate it. That's when next time you can create and uh, you can make the entries onto the table. Basically, we will not change any database specific properties because the customers are existing and they always want the existing ones. So log changes, we will select if the customer needs it. Mostly you will have everything as transparent table. So if you have a master data, master table also, even in that case, you will, you will check it in the same way. See, this is a master data. Exactly. So that's where like there are, there are, there are like combined tables together. So all these tables, multiple tables combined together, we'll be having those. Yeah. So how you see the contents, how you add the contents, all those remains the same. So here we will see the contents, we'll execute. I will show you on how we add the contents as well, but this is a standard table. So I still have access to create. Yeah, I do have access to create, but I don't want to create because these were being standard ones and these were being used across. So I have an option to create it. So this is how we can create the entries on your table. See, same like the how you have seen the parameter screen. We will add the entries and I can click on save. It will automatically create an entry, but I don't want to touch this table, whichever sample table we create on that we will work. 
anything anything more on this any other doubt on this if not we can start with one example of z employee so they are saying like giving us an example like create two tables which is z employee and z department to which they belongs to that means they want one as master table and one as a trans transactional table these are all transparent tables we are creating all these as transparent tables but one as master and one as transactional data so they have given the details of what the employee these are the master data so which won't be changed frequently so that's why i assume they would have told they have mentioned to keep it as i didn't actually check through this but we will consider it as master table itself whereas this is the second will yeah see they have said, they have mentioned the first one as master data itself okay and uh, what they have taken for department this could be this is a fax number client and carry id so this is the department what they have has just to create and even this department is master data okay they didn't give any example for transactional data we'll create one for transactional also they didn't give us that example so we can create one we can create employee that's okay the department is not a problem until and unless they have used it somewhere else we don't have this program in place i don't think so this we will see later how we will we have already seen activating and inactivating these objects so on this we'll further work on it but we'll concentrate on other activity okay we are not having any program so basically in the other exercises this is the main exercise what we have to work on creating the table and making the entries all the other exercises they are specifying on like if we have any dependency on this dictionary if we have any inactive or no active objects how does work how it affects so these are all certain examples for that so if you are changing something on the table level so then you have to check where else it is being affected where else we have to change so that is what they are giving the information about this this you can check on it uh, but don't change anything on s flight because that would affect so let's create this we have only 5 minutes left uh, do you want me to create one and show or how you want to practice it okay i will i'll only create the employee one for now okay and then um, this will be the employee table so delivery class asset it will be the first one it's an application table and uh, i want to allow everything so i don't want any restriction so that's why i'm allowing everything so coming to the fields we will take the fields whatever they have given so one is mandate you can name it like however we want so the next one will be carrier i didn't understand why they want to give carrier in employee name let's give that instead of employee id they have taken it as the carrier id i guess hmm. do you want me to create a carrier id or you want me to create with an employee id if you want to follow the same exercise i will create with the carrier id itself in general case it would not be carrier that's for sure I'll not create multiple fields. I'll just create few fields to see how it works, and then we can create first name, last name. We already have, so we can use the same. Is it Z name zero zero? No, 
uh, does anyone remind the domain name we have created? First name, last name we had created. Yeah, first name, last name, yes. Okay, uh, so I will add area and then I will add salary. They want it as a currency field. If you see, they want the salary as a currency field with 10 decimals, with 10 characters and two decimals. I'm taking the link type for now. So this is by default. So now I'm activating this. So it by default came to technical settings. So technical settings, employee table, this is a master table. We will not be changing it. So that's why I'm taking the master data and the size category. So we will have a different size category. I'm taking the first size category because this is a temporary table. So assuming that it will not have more. I'm not selecting buffer. So if you select the log changes, so then we can track the log changes also about the other one, which we have seen about setting the client. We'll go to the transaction and we'll see in our next class. So here we have saved this. Once this is saved, technical settings for the table employee not consistent. Let's first activate our table also. So that is the reason we didn't activate our table and we didn't have any primary key. So I want carrier ID, employee number and mandate as mandatory fields and I didn't activate my table. If you have any currency field, then you have to specify in currency field. What is the reference table? So the different reference table would be Z employee and the field would be we will take it as uh, what is that S flight. So now we didn't get any issues because we have activated everything. So we have added everything. So now everything is added and even the technical settings are available. So we don't, we can see if we have any entries. We don't have any entries. So it will not give us any entries. So this is where we'll get uh, how we can adjust all this, how we can adjust the screen and all we will see further. So in the next class, we'll create entries onto this table and then we will work on it. In the meantime, try to create these tables and the entries. So adding these is, this is a little simple. So I guess this could have been done. Um, okay, you have given the details. So uh, from line 28, if you see, we didn't separate it with comma or anything. So when you're writing all this in a sequence, we have to separate everything with a comma. And if you want in next slide, you can either use new line statement or backslash and space. So the last one should end with a period. Yeah. So now if you check, I guess it will not cause any issue. So yeah, you can see at line 22 that after street, you didn't give any space. So we have to give spaces after every keyword or an addition. So here for this parameter, you have to give space after street and equals to. Insert key and give space. You can turn off the insert key on keyboard so that, yeah, now after street, give space and equals to. So after equals to, when you're giving a value, even then you should give space. So now this looks fine. Now, in, even in the next line, 
you should give space. Yeah, the starting to. Yeah. You can check it and then you can activate it. Yeah. Now it now it got activated. You can have that symbol next to activate, right? That you can use to execute directly. Yes, that one. Okay. But you're not using this anywhere. So without giving the values, because those are not mandatory fields, if you again execute, it will give you the output. Try executing this directly without giving any of these values. Uh, you have to execute it. There is another symbol next to save. So that's the execute button. No, 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 that's where you list. Just before that, you know, there is like a reverse F kind of symbol. Yes, that's direct processing. Or click on F8 on your screen. Yeah, execute. It's... So again, click on that, uh, you know, time symbol you can see on the top between save and cancel. That's the item. Yeah, click on execute. This is the output. Click on enter, so it is not existing. Or else use any other component, Z Mobile, or do one thing someone would have created, right? Give Z Mobile asterisk F4. Asterisk, asterisk. Shift 8, it is. No. The star, the star mark. Yeah. Yeah, now click on F4 button on your keyboard. Okay, uh, F4 is not working. Okay, there is this one, right? The button next to it. Click on that button. Yeah. Yes, select the first one. Select the first one. First one. Search for data elements. Yeah. Use, see, 22 was not created. So use the first one. That's okay. Use the first one. Z mobile. Yeah, now click on save. Local object. Now click on activate. No, that's a check. You can click on activate. It's just warnings. So this would be enhancement category. That is fine. Activate. It is active now. Now click on display. That's how it works. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. So a uh, reminding. So we have discussed about database table creation and we have taken an example on this employee one, right? Okay, then we will check on to it because uh, if we have the tables, then we have one more exercise. Using these tables, we'll be creating one view and then we'll go to the next topic. Firstly, we'll cover this and then we'll. If uh, any of you have not created, uh, start creating now, start creating your database tables. And uh, firstly, I look into the issues what you're facing in creating the tables. Uh, yeah, now it is done. Uh, you can open a new transaction if not. Now, we can activate even from the screen directly. We have the activate buttons on the top. So there we can do it. So this will have for our programs and all other you know classes and all. We'll see that anyway. So for, yeah. Now, uh, so AB is what you have entered, right? Uh, exit, no, no. Be on the selection screen. Be on the selection screen. Execute, execute it. Now, the second one. Second one, come to the second parameter. Don't enter anything. So we have A, B also. The first thing we have to see is like whether we have details in S flight table with A, B. So we can, in today's class itself, after coding, we have this debugging class where I will show you how we can find the issue through our debugging. Okay. So there are no 
no values in S flight for A, B. That's why you are not able to see. Don't give anything in first. Give A, B, A, A in second one. Give J, L. I guess you would have for J, L. I, I don't. Yeah. Uh, see, okay. now you can see the output for second. It is because there are no entries in the table. In, in today's class, after coding part, um, we'll start with debugging, basic debugging and initial debugging. So there we will see how we can check this directly in your code. Why the output is not coming. All these details we can identify. In our class session, I'll tell you. It's not uh, mandatory that you have to give S flight as a reference table. You can give your table itself. Yesterday, uh, for creation and for showing it, I gave you, I gave S flight table. So we can give the same table. So what does this reference means is like when you are giving a salary field, so you have to specify them. What does this? So these are currency fields, right? So currency field will have a currency code. So that's why we specify the salary field to a currency field. Okay, that means the salary is not just a numeric value, but it's an amount. And this amount, see, uh, the salary will be either in dollars, rupees, euros, whatever it can be. So in these kind of values, like quantities, if you take some quantity, whether it should be in ml, it should be in meters, it should be. So what kind of calculation we have to make? So what kind of field it is? So what kind like means if i give quantity 20 what 20 means is it 20 ml is it 20 liters 20 meters we don't mm -hmm. understand right so for that okay. purpose even for currency if i say ten thousand, is it ten thousand rupees ten thousand dollars what it is so to identify that we have this code and to relate those two we add the reference table and reference field yesterday i didn't add this currency code onto the z table so that's why i have added s flight so, but we generally use the same table itself. If we, we will add different table if both of them are related. Until and unless we'll not give a different table. So suppose if S flight is related to my employee table, in that case I can give, I can tell them, okay, this currency you can refer to that table, the same one I'm using here. But okay. if we, if the table is independent of other tables, give the same table. Yeah, exactly. This currency code refers to the salary field. So you're saying like my currency is in dollars or rupees, whichever I specify in the currency code field. Okay, so this is not identifying it. Okay, uh, I'll do one thing. I'll firstly log into the system and I will uh, just open this table and check. Just give me a second. Okay. I got the details. Uh, I'll just log into that. I didn't log into the new system, so it would be easy for me to check. So what they have given there was, this is the data element name, and data element, inside data elements, we create the domains, right? So that's what they, they mean by the domain. So generally, we try to create with that, but it's suggestible to create only with data elements. Data elements have the domains. Inside data elements, we have domains, right? That's what they mean. Uh, the care value only applies, uh, takes till 255. The string length of the character, like 255. So it will take till that point of time. If you're giving care, then it is limited to 255. So it's not like on domain level. So character will take only 55. So there are cases even where in domain we can we have declared the character till 500 also. So what where we will use them as like when you're giving some application server names the server path or the server value which we convert them into http codes so these all happen internally and we will save them in our tables in those cases we have even given 500 as a limit so it takes the limit so i'm saying uh, the care limit in um, in general declaration is still 225 Okay, in general declaration, as in in codes, uh, we can only uh, like yes. So somewhere, if you have declared like in your um, about programming, if you just mention it as car, you can give the length. You can adjust the length actually, but only car means it is still two, like string. How we have string till two twenty five in the same manner. But on string, we can We generally don't increase the length on string. We generally increase the length only on car. Yeah. Select that. Now you can click on choose components. So from here you can okay, close this. Can you show me the line type you have used? 
okay so why you are not getting anything is like on line type firstly we have to give which table you want to specify the primary key so if you are not specifying any key it will not it will not be able to understand what should i pick so here firstly you have to give the line type as s flight then you will be able to identify it now you can go to this flight now you can go to primary key and do it okay so phone is not an internal table uh, okay so can you uh, can you close this error and go to that wa person declaration for me once uh here it's just on syntax error you can just close this there are three buttons on top right just close that yeah now can you scroll up okay this is the structure you have created the z person developer 20 underscore structure can you double click on it on top on number one yeah double click so this is the one you have created this is active okay this is the table type yeah now get back click on the back oh, no no not the alt tab uh, go to that screen come back to your code so on top you have this batch yeah come back click on it so can you sc scroll down now uh, scroll down yeah okay uh, so wa phone so w it is giving issue with the work area phone i was checking the person not the person but w your phone is a structure so you have to specify the field at line 27 which field you want to pass q hyphen after phone q hyphen after phone like how you have given w a person hyphen same manner phone hyphen what is the field name is it mobile number is it email whatever you are giving hyphen mobile whatever you have declared or you can do hyphen control space you can see list of the fields it's phone only fo click on the table type click on the table type of the phone so it's a phone can you click on it double click on it yeah click on the component type okay there's a data element then good come back after wa phone you have to give hyphen phone why because the work area phone is for the structure so you have to specify the field name you didn't specify the field name at line 27 so that's why at line 27 phone hyphen phone you have to give uh okay i didn't uh, log into the uh, particular system in the meanwhile i'll just log into that ecs system eh7 is it okay yeah good i have the system ready with me yeah okay now you are in edit mode can you go to okay you didn't choose key components in the key definition the radio button on top you have to write key definition key category top top, top. more up you have to more yes you have to select the key components radio button yes now we will be able to see, select terminator means it caused dump for you so you have executed is it Uh, so it it has caused dump for you if it causes any dump that's when it will say terminate there is no you created this as an include so this has to be an uh, executable program so includes you can't activate uh, execute directly so that's why you were getting that error so whatever you have created in the second page where you give attributes the text name you have selected include program it should be executable program we are not supposed to create include programs include programs will be again used in those executable programs okay uh, so basically have, yeah yeah then i have to again uh yeah 
we can try to change the attributes. Uh, go to this. Okay, the, on the above, you should go to pro. Yeah, click on edit program. I, I have to see where we have attributes. No. Go to. Click on go to. Yeah, go to attributes. Now change the include program to executable program. First one it will be, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, it, select the information message. Oops, is it okay to the information message? Close that, close that. It's not. I know that uh, whenever that Zara in tech sharing your screen one is there, if you perform any activities below it, it's not working. I just realized while doing that. Yeah, it's too slow now. Yeah. Uh, hide that, uh, star, uh, the, that uh, you know, Zara and tech is sharing your screen. Ah. Hide, click on hide and then do the same. It is quite quicker. No, not there. You can, I don't know why it is happening. This was happening. I. I check while we are having that, it is not able to identify our activity. Okay, the report statement is missing. So why? Because we added it as an include. So that's why the report statement is not there. If we create it as an executable program, by default, the report name will come. So what you have to do is like, you have to write like report and give the name, whatever you have used for the report name, the keyword report, whatever you have given the name and then end with a period. Okay, so specifying primary key means in the yes. table, we will be having the first field, right? Uh, I'll take this particular table. So there is this uh, checkbox. There is this first second row key and we have a check. So that's as now you don't have any error. So try activating and executing it. Mm, if you can stop sharing, I can share my screen once. So here we have this key fields, right? So this is where we specify the primary key. If it is a primary key, this is the checkbox we have to select. So this is what you have to do. This is where you will do it. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Okay, so, so if you have given this, then it accepted. If you're giving, okay, if you're giving this one, then it is. Okay. Okay, so uh, if a remaining or if we can check with another example and go ahead, but Kirinder, I'll check that for now. We will continue with the, that one, but I have to check on your screen. Sure, uh, sure. If anyone, yeah, because uh, I can't edit it. I'm not able to test it. We'll check that one. So anyone else have any other issue? So no one else have faced the currency issue, is it? Okay, now go to currency fields. I don't give a flight. So this is what I was uh, trying to explain. So I gave a flight yesterday. Why? Because I didn't add the currency field on the employee table. We were in the last minute. So I took the existing one. So here we generally will give only our table name. So give Z employee. Okay. So this is this uh, employee, whatever you have created on top, why yes. only till why? So the reference field will be the currency field. Yeah. Can you check? We'll see whether we're getting the same issue. Okay, uh, you need to specify a primary key. So primary key is like selecting that to fields, go to fields, yeah. Client, always, carrier ID and employee number. First name and all can be common, so yeah, you can ignore those. Can you do one thing? Uh, 
can you delete that entry save and again add i mean this is how we generally add i i have to check why it gives that error uh, and uh, prajna as we are already on the screen can you open the technical settings once okay uh, so we will add this technical settings also that's when we can start creating the entries user once try that if that does not work i have to create and if i have to reproduce that error to see i am not able to edit because we have some restrictions in the system i guess so it's not giving edit access so but generally how it works is like if a custom table is created it's not specified to one user any user belonging to that system developer will be able to access but uh, seems like the profiles which were assigned to us have some restrictions that's why i was not able to edit your program activate this activate this warnings are fine get back so can you see the technical settings now so okay these are saved sometimes what happens is like the technical settings won't be saved so in that case if it is not saved then do one thing activate your table again come to technical settings it anyway asks while activating so then check whether this got saved or not so now this got saved now come back so we will first uh, start with um, creating so i'll explain what view is after this so we will start with creating entries onto this table so we have certain t codes uh, to um, continue on the same because uh, i haven't created the table we will use the existing tables which were created by any one of you all right let's test your knowledge here's a question for you what is the event keyword used to trigger events in abap objects option a on option b when option c if option d after take a moment to think and when you're ready choose the correct option remember each choice holds a key to unlocking the answer good luck type the correct answer in the comment section hey there are you ready to dive into the world of sap abap our self paced course on our platform is your ticket to mastering this essential skill in this course You'll unlock the secrets of SAP ABAP, the language behind customizing SAP applications. Think of it as your toolkit for making SAP do exactly what you need it to do. Our curriculum covers everything from the basics to advanced techniques, crafted by seasoned experts who know the ins and outs of SAP ABAP like the back of their hand. Meet your instructor, a seasoned pro in the world of SAP. ready to guide you through every step of your learning journey and answer any questions you might have but don't just take our word for it hear it from our satisfied students they found our course invaluable in their journey to sap mastery and the best part it's all at a price that won't break the bank quality training shouldn't come with a hefty price tag and we've made sure of that so are you ready to level up your sap skills Don't miss out. Sign up now on our teachable course page. And for more information, visit Zarin Tech's website below for full details on the training curriculum and formats. So, we have certain transactions to create entries for this table. So, we will use the transaction or we can directly create it from the tables also. So firstly, yeah. Uh, so we have this transaction called SC sixteen. Um, yeah. Uh, can you please open a backslash o SC sixteen transaction? Yeah. Can you click on on top? You could see create button, right? Can you click on that? Next to on top there are yeah the second one the second one. Click on that. So this is how we can create the entry. So this is one transaction. Can you give some uh, numbers here? So if, have you maintained any checks for any of these fields? Oh, I mean initializing value, right? Uh, about... initializing value is fine. No. So there is something called input slash check 
on your SC11 screen. So, okay, that's okay. You will create, we'll see. If there is something, it will give us an error if it is not a valid field. So we'll create values for now. Uh, INR, no, it, it is not a value. It should be the key code. You can give INR. If it is restring, uh, restricting, it will show us. INR, save it. So why it is, is like you would have had an input check. So that's why it is, you know, giving that error. If you have input check, then it will give the error. Select something. Yeah, now click on save. Yes, so now you can go to your table. Even from here, you can go back to SC11 again and click on table contents, the first one. SC11 or SC16 is also fine. Click on table display. Click on display. On, the, on just before technical settings, there is table contents. Click on that. Just before technical settings, yeah. Now see number of entries. Click on the number of entries, you should see one. Yeah. So we have one. So if we create, uh, if you click on the execute, there is this execute option. So with that, close this. With that execute, can you click on execute? Just, be, just before that, just before, click on it. So it will show you the entry. So like this, we tend to create multiple entries. And um, if we want to see the other entries, let me again try to log into the same system. At, at least I'll see if I have access to see the contents. I hope I'll have. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, so here I want to even mention about the other options, like how you can find only the ones you want. So these are the parameters, like how you have created, but rather than execution, we will just give the values and once you execute it will pick any carrier id with that value and it will display if i give some carrier id which is not existing like if i give five if i try to execute it is not existing it will not give the output so here we could see and from here also you can edit it you can create it so the option is either from your table directly or just how from the other transaction, SC16, you can do. You can do from any of those ones. So as there is no restriction, I want to give a different one. So now there are two entries I have created. So how we have checked these entries is like, you come to your table, you click on table contents. You can either do it from SC11 or SC16 also does the same. SC16, just before the create button, we have that. I'll show that also. If I execute, it will show all the entries. If I try to find only one, just give the value. It's not always carry ready. You can, you can, I can even give employee number, okay? and I can execute whichever value you know. Suppose I don't know the employee number also and I only know the first name. Then I'll give the value here. So what it will do is like, it will pick all the entries who has first name as AAA. So this is how it will find those. I can give any, I can give area, department, I can give any fields that belongs to your table. So using settings, format list, choose fields, you can choose what all fields you want to display. Suppose I don't want to find something using salary and currency, then I'll do this. Okay, sorry, that is for um, displaying. So now if I don't want to see even here in the screen, I don't want to have them, then I'll remove those. And if I click on execute, see now I can't see salary details. So this is just to hide the fields while you don't want unnecessary fields means you can remove and you can see only the required fields. This is how we will see the data of that exists in the table. So even in a slide, if you are trying to find in one of our example, we notice that when we give AB, we can't find anything. So you can give the carrier ID here the carrier ID, we didn't add input check. That's why it is taking three, four, anything. If we add input check, then it will not allow us to give three, four and anything. We should give the values only from this particular list. 
like how it has restricted us for area. And once we execute this, so there are no values. So that's why we didn't find anything. So if you see, I like execute and then we'll see. So I can either pick from any of these values. So there exists with, there are 397 entries that were identified. Okay, yesterday it was 94. Okay, that was in a different system. So the, here you have 397 entries, which are for AAA, AZ, all this. So whichever are existing, that can be identified. So this is how we will create tables and maintain entries into the tables. Is this part of a creation of entries onto tables clear for you? We'll once, uh, because we are in this flow, we'll once cover this, then we'll get back. I'll get back to it. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. So for tables, we also have other fields. We would have noticed this. So this is a various list. Various list is nothing but if you want to see where this has been used, that's where we use various list. Whether you want to see in which program it has been used. So you're selecting those, you can identify wherever that S flight has been used. For now, I want to see whether this has been used in any views. I'll explain about views once we are able to find if it is used in any view. So yes, we do have certain views where this has been used. So we will pick one such view and we will see what that view means. So views are similar to tables, but this is not where we create our entries. In tables, we are able to create our entries. So what are these views basically are? Suppose you have two tables. So you want to join those two tables. So we would have heard about these inner joins, outer joins that we apply onto select queries, right? If you have too many tables, you would be ending up writing too many joins onto the tables. To avoid that, you have, we have these views available. So what basically these views do is like, if you have created multiple tables, multiple transactional tables, and you know that if someone want to see the data from these two to three tables together, in your report, you can use join, but someone want to see the data on like GUI. So they have to go to each table and find it. It would make their job difficult. So that's where we add multiple tables like this, as like S flight, SP flight, SP carrier. So these are different tables. They combine these two and they have specified the key fields of those tables. So for this, the key field is mandate. So for this and this one, how they are connecting it is via mandate and carrier ID. And for these two, SPFLI and SP flight. So there would be connection between these two and there would be connection between these two. So how they have connected the below two is like using three fields, three key fields. So that's how the key and foreign key relation works. Foreign key is like the secondary key. Excuse me. <clears throat> so the foreign key. So that's where you connect the primary to key to the foreign key. So but here they have specified everything as a key field. So this is how they write and join, joining the condition based on what field. Suppose uh, take an example like employee and project. So there are so many projects, so many employee details in a project table. So we have an Z employee table, which we have created there. We are having one entry for an employee and employee details. So in a project details, there are so many projects and you know, there could be chance that one employee is in multiple projects. Also, someone comes and says like, I want to see the employee belonging to one particular project and I want to see the employee details as well. So what we'll do? We'll pick two tables. We'll write a condition on employee ID, and then we'll say like, this is the employee name. This is the project he is working on. This is the employee details, like address or phone number, whatever you want. So we are clubbing them together and displaying. We will not create entries in views. We'll create entries individually in tables, but this helps us to see the data connecting the three tables. So this is how. So nowhere we have the carrier name in S flight, but if it is AA, what will you understand? If you see the output, we can't understand. So here we have identified the required fields. It's not necessary that you have to display all the fields. We'll only pick the required fields and this is how we will display the data. So to even 
this views can be used in our select queries that reduces our too many joins and you know if you want some name or something we can identify it from the view name whatever you create in that table will automatically be displayed in this so there is no another any special maintenance of entries in this view whatever we create in these tables that will be displayed so whatever fields you want to add you can add like this what's the field name from which table you are picking that field so once you pick that the data element will appear for that so similarly we will be doing it for all the fields that are required uh, so did you get what does a view means and how this will be useful okay head i'll get i'll get back to you but uh, i want you to understand these tables and views why because uh, in real time someone would ask you to create a table it's not always they'll ask you to create a table it's based on their requirement so sometimes they would ask you to create the views so please practice this it's not just the exercise pick anything you know which is relevant and try to create all that you know create the tables then create the views check how it works and try to create the entries and uh, in our next sessions we'll use the select queries and all we'll see how we can fetch from these tables and all so for your practice uh, create different tables create different views you have created z employee so that's why they would have given a z department also so create z department create a view combining those two and all Okay, so Z W A phone is type Z S T R underscore phone twenty two. That is what you have created, right? Yes. Yeah. The, can you double click on it? S T R. Yeah, from here. So this is how the navigation works. So you have created only mobile as a field. Yes. So, but what are you doing in the program? Can you get back to the program? Exactly. remove the line 29 you don't have type it so itself you only have mobile so remove the line 29 at line 30 instead of p number give it as a person mobile after not person it should be phone mobile not person it should be phone work area phone work area not person remove that number also it's not mobile number it's just mobile that's the field name that's the field name you have created always check the field names you have created and refer to that and also it's not wa underscore person it should be wa underscore phone that's the structure name person will be the address first name so phone yeah now wa phone into table yeah so you can create same entry again oh yeah so it's not remove that remove it and give mobile keep the phone keep the phone keep the phone w a hyphen uh, underscore phone is correct hyphen it has to be mobile no 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 you don't have p type hi uh, just a second so what i am trying to tell you is this p type and p number or the structures that has been created in that example so in whatever exercise you have seen the structure they have created they have two fields and they named it as p underscore type and p underscore number but what you have named you always have to see your structure and you have to pick your field names okay the next line will not be valid because you don't have two fields you have only one field that is mobile so you have to remove the line 44 and you have to end your line at 43 itself remove that yeah remove that so uh, you can end your period at line 43 you have only one field yeah so instead of having one you can create two so you can copy and paste the lines where you have written that phone and you can give a different phone number scroll up if you have one you will not understand right 30 to 31 copy and paste and change the number then copy those two lines select those two lines select the two lines select the two lines yeah copy them control c you can you copy them using control c and you can paste them again at line 32 No, not here. Line thirty-two. So I'm asking you to make multiple entries for the table. That's what. Change the mobile number. Don't give the same mobile number. Give a different mobile number. Just change couple of digits. That would be enough. Just change last two or three digits. Yeah. Now, if you activate and activate, 
and then uh, you see the output you will get both the phone numbers what you have added so this is how it works so can you double click on the component type it's not a structure uh, so if you see suvarna the phone the phone you didn't give table type you have to give table type whatever you have given it's a data element the phone field select the phone field select the phone field uh, click on the component type. Click on the component type of it. See IT underscore phone. So uh, while creating data elements, just give the data elements like Z phone number. But you're creating table type, then only give Z IT. So whatever you have created for phone is actually a data element. Can you double click on that? Whereas name is a structure. You can see the data type symbol there itself. We can, we'll be able to identify. This is a data element. That's the issue. So. Uh, Check an existing table type if someone has created, pick that data type, ask someone, get that, and then try it. It will work. So that's the issue. Change the component from um, no data type, data element to a table type. So yeah, and um, we need to start, guys. We are lagging. So Subarna, I would ask you to stop sharing your screen so that I can start with today's you know session. Change the data component type. It will work for you. Thank you. We have most of you in. You can lower your hands, then uh, I will st sh start sharing my screen and we will start with our next exercise. Not exercise, basically, we have to start with the, our chapter itself. So today, uh, we'll be discussing about coding and debugging. So coding, we have mostly covered it, but let's look into it. If we have missed anything, we'll try to practice that today. And then I'll explain you about debugging and then we can see how else we can debug and check. So, uh, so in first chapter, we have multiple topics included here. You have already seen what data types are and how we use data types for our selections. So, but I will explain thoroughly or just an overview on what these are and why we have used it in such a manner. So this is the same thing what we have used in our uh, first or second session. I guess it's in second session. We have created name and age. So if from your customer or from someone, they say that the name is allowed only with, you know, alphabets or characters, but you're not supposed to enter anything else, then we have to pick the relevant data element. But if someone comes to you and says like name can be anything because some organization would also start with, you know, different characters, different symbols and all. So if name this ask you like it can be given as anything. And of any length, then what parameter you will define and if it is an age, it will always be a whole number. What parameter will define? So for this, as we have already worked, we are already aware that it would be good practice to give string for name and it would be good practice, you know, to give integer for name. If I speak generically, we don't give the string or um, integer, we will prefer data elements because we always refer these to some existing tables. So we'll pick them from data elements. So they were trying to explain the same thing over here. That is for PA name, the string makes sense. Yes, it makes sense, makes sense. Whereas integer, no, it doesn't make sense because it only allows characters. Similarly for age, string doesn't make sense. Why? Because it takes anything. And for age, we only want numerical character. So this is what we were trying to explain in detail what a data type means. So what all factors will affect the value? So values are nothing but whatever we give here. OK, those are the things we call them as values that we are already aware of. So what does actually affect the type? What you are giving for that value is the thing that affects. So the name or the parameter, if you give PA name or PA age, but give the character it as character and enter a name value, does it matter? No, whatever you give in the selection text that will pick. If you give PA one, two, three also, it doesn't matter. It doesn't affect. But to understand if someone comes and checks your code for them to understand will give a better naming convention. So the type of parameter is what that determines what values can be entered and how you can enter them. So that's why uh, you can think of any data type as being a formal description of a variable, whatever that input field is. So the type is what that plays the major role of the value, the value, whatever you enter or 
whatever must be entered is depending on data type itself. So data type is not only for determining the values, it is also useful like you know to identify like what I can do with this data. Suppose you want to do an addition or subtraction if there is a character field, if you do subtraction between two character fields, it doesn't give you an output as an integer, right? Like they can enter anything. So the addition and subtraction doesn't really work on those. So if someone give you ABC and ask you to do an addition, does it really make sense? No. So on integers or on decimals or on currency or these kind of variables, we can perform those activities. So in this screen, they have given us the existing fields and they have explained us like what the string and what these also means. See, C is like the character. So this is like fixed length. Um, I guess the maximum length, if you specify it on a domain level would be some 30,000 or something. I can refer and confirm you what is the exact value. Whereas if you haven't specified anything, then it will be 255. If you are giving just care, then it is maximum till 255. You can extend the length by adding length field, length uh, keyword to it. So we have date, time, and other numeric values like integer and P as for decimal numbers, all those. So here they are doing the same thing. Whatever we have just specified, if they are taking the character field, they are specifying the length. If you want it as two, you can specify the length like this. You don't want 255 characters and you want to restrict the length, you will specify like this. But generally we go with data element practice itself. So this is to understand how well the keywords can be used in some in some use cases, it does make sense to have it. So here they have taken an example to pick two parameters and uh, add those two parameters. So if you are interested, pick two parameters, create two parameters and either perform, you know, multiplication, addition, subtraction for your practice purpose, you can do it. So this is what they have done. So they were explaining about here other numerical data types, like how we have already discussed about character. So what does packed means? So these data types have two digits in each byte and it will have before decimal and after decimal values. So this is basically mostly used for the calculation purpose, like in, in a business also, if you want to perform some calculation on two quantities or two, uh, two any two fields, that's when we, declare it as pack type also. So in principle, the variable of type P can contain twice as many digits as specified length. So, but half of the byte is required for a sign. We have created in our first session, if you remember, a data element with a negative and positive sign and the decimal fields. So that is what they are saying, like it can be done using a packed data type. So the other example I'm saying what we basically use was either the global data types or the data types which we create. So what is a material? All this material, all these are like, you know, this come from SAP functional module called material management. So for this, we have some standard SAP table like EKKO, EKPO, all these. And also for MM, we have uh, Mara. This is a table name, MARA, and they have field name called MATNA. This is where very famously used across because every business has this material procurement, any manufacturing business, all this habit. So they have this material codes, materials, all those things saved. So they save it in their system in this MARMARA table and all. So they are taking the same example material here. So here, in that case, if this is a material, you already know that there is a table called MARA. So this will be specified for, by your functional team anyway and you will pick those details and you will create the parameters. So how we'll get to know all these things? It's from the functional team. So they will be aware and they'll tell you like, these are the fields I'm referring to and this is how I want. So that's why if you see here, they have taken the same example material is from Mara table and we call it as MATNA. M-A-T-N-R is the form field name for material. So um, this is how all the existing global data types can be used. So you can find this Mara table. If you go to SC11 and give Mara table, you can also see the table existing. Like that, we have so many tables like EKKO, EKPO, all the uh, there are for SD module, so many other. It's based on the requirement. So they are saying like 
this is in a BAP dictionary table, the client field, the mandate field, which we have created for our employee table, similar manner they have it and they have the material demo. So this is what they have basically picked. So this the, in, even here, they are saying like either you can pick from global data types or you can pick from standard types. Suppose you have created something of standard types and if you want a second variable, which is just exactly of the above data type, that means in future, if they change the above one, they don't need to change the below one. So what they did was the second variable, they make like the statement goes. If you read it, what does it mean? The variable two is just like variable one. So like is another usage for a type where we will use this when we want it same like another variable. So the best practice is to use type, but we use like in few cases, like if you want it to be same like an above one, even if it changes, if you want the below one to be changed automatically, that's when we use like as well. So like and type are the keywords. So you can refer more about like and type using F1 key, enter type and do an, an F1 key and you can find all those. So here they have taken an example like text and result. This is all like for our practice purpose, we have already seen it. If you have any doubt, then we will look into it. So this is where they are doing different declarations and just adding it like how else it can be div. So this is what we call it as variables. That's why they are naming as ZV. ZV is mostly used for global variable. If you're only declaring in your report, I would say use LV because it's a local report and we are using for local purpose. So that means local variable. So you can try declaring it with the different fields, different values and see how it works. So the same thing, why they have taken ZV result was maybe they have two parameters. They have to perform some activity and they have want to display the output. So that's why they are declaring the ZV result. So, and we can use a value addition to pre-assign a value to a variable. That means default values. So if you click, the, if you write default and give a value, by default, that value will be there for that particular field. So in data statement, you can provide length to a variable like type C or type P. Here they have taken type P. Now first example, they have taken type C. So either like this, they can specify the length or while declaring itself, you know, this is how they can specify the length restriction to it. So this is, this is the most, you know, followed way. Even this is fine. There is no wrong in following any, but you can follow anyway. So they have tried the same thing. We have already did this. So they have taken hello world and they have just written write one, two, three. If it's a numerical, you don't need to specify in single quotes. You can directly add it. So that is what they are saying about literals and strings. That means they are the characters that they are not having any names. And these values can be changed because they are essentially, sorry, can't be changed because these are hard coded. So this is what I have been mentioning. This can't be changed, this can't be changed. Whereas if you take it into LV variable, that can be changed. So literals or constants can't be changed, whereas variables can be changed. This is the point we can remember. If it's a constant, we can't change. If it is a literal, is like, for numerics, so that can't be changed. If it's a variable, if you give a default value, later you can change. So, but for constant, it's we can't change it. Like the hard-coded values, we can never change. So that's why what we do is like, we will define text symbols in these scenarios, okay? So what does this text symbols usually means is like, However, we have seen the selection text when we created the selection parameters like P A name, we have by default seen a selection text. Similar to that, if you are creating a text and if you assume that this will be changed or, and if, or else if you need a translation, if you directly hard code, you can't translate it, right? So in that scenarios, if you specify the text symbol to it, in that case, we can change the values via the text symbol. So here they haven't specified the text symbol. They have declared the constants and they have given it directly. So this is how the constant works. They will be with a constant keyword and you can declare the type of it and you can specify the value here. Whereas default is used for parameters and whereas for constant, we will have a keyword value and we will specify that particular value to it. So what we would say about constant is like instead of having literals 
it is better to specify them as constants because you because you can go and change it constant and wherever it is used it will be modified if you directly type anywhere like the numbers you have to go and find wherever the number has been used and you have to change it so rather than that this is a better approach that if you have it as a constant you can change it at one place rather than going and changing it you know multiple places and in different different statements so as we just spoke about text symbols in our previous example we will continue with the same if it is a program if you are creating it's just the naming convention they used it as gv so if it is a pro you can't use it program whatever you declare in a program will be used in that program itself in reports it is okay i'll tell you where we have this global constants and global global variables so we have some other thing called classes and methods also in about so whereas this reports okay. are only for the report purpose so if you have something in classes you know so with the class instance you can call that global constants so for practice we will all create some classes we'll keep the global constant and we'll use them in our reports in our reports or in other classes but whatever we do in reports is for that reports so that's why for example they have given it as and they have showed it as gv but whatever you do in report we generally go with you know lv but why they use gv is also a report will have includes that means whatever we are practicing now is simple report only some statements but sometimes you will have too many things included in a report that means if i click on this button it should perform this activity if i click on second button then i should perform second activity so there will be different activities right for different activities what we do is like we'll create either routines or we'll go for include programs in that case if you declare something in your report in the include programs you can use that so that's where they call it global variable again but not outside the report internally okay. in that report so that's how the local and global variables are existing so but uh, now in real time usage what people are trying to do is like instead of having includes and all in uh, reports they are trying to have it as classes and methods because we are moving towards object oriented programming so that can be reused in multiple reports also right so if you are creating in one report you have to copy and paste it so for reusability purpose and all people are trying to go to function modules classes and modules classes and methods so that it can be reused i was a little quick on the abo session because you know abo lesson because we are already aware of this and we have already practiced it i hope that's okay for you all it, so i i'll be a little quicker on this i will uh, ask you even to create an automatic operation why i want you to create that is like we will be debugging the program on debugging if i keep on explaining it will go overhead so i will even though there is a lot on this ppt if you want to read it it will be helpful for you to understand it i'll explain you but i want to show it on a real example how we debug um, like in, in one of the examples that is giridhar's code or somewhere we see that ab is not fetching the data i'll show that example also in our debugging session today how it can be used so for for now we'll first complete the coding part and then we'll go to it so what does this text symbols and all mean and where it can be used and how we can assign the values to these variables calculations or the generic calculations or generic mathematical calculations and all those we will cover in the second lesson so this is what they're saying like that we have this program hello and congratulations on reaching the age of what if the person don't read what do we need we need translation so in that we said that a web is a multilingual one where we can provide we have also seen one example they have have this even description with the german name they have the naming conventions also with the german name because we have the translation they logged in with german so that's why they were able to create everything with the german names so similarly if someone logs in and someone sees an output if they don't understand if you hard code they can't see their language so that is where we will give the text assigned to it so they are just mentioning about the same thing uh, how text symbols can be used and how we can add different languages to it using the translation 
so what they just did here was do you notice next to hello they just added something like this and this is where we call it as a text element of that particular program and we can give what it means in different languages similarly for age also they have written text age so instead of writing you know directly like this directly like this so they are specifying the text name so either you can specify next to hard coded value like this or you can specify the text and create it can be character or anything so it has to be three so that's why they have picked hgl from hello and age from age and they have had the translations for all the languages translations will generally be provided by translators and those will be added so that's why in whatever language they want whatever language they log in it will be displayed so that's this is what they were mentioning here that the text symbols can be translated into different languages and it has to be three character which can be either alphabets or characters so we tend to practice it from 001 so that we'll have it in a sequence it's not necessary that you have to follow only numbers you can pick whichever is comfortable if you feel that if having a character is comfortable you can pick that one also so they are specifically mentioning the same thing how we can specify it it can be either directly text hyphen that or whichever hard coded value you give followed by that term open and close parentheses how else can we find so the same way go to text elements and text symbols just next to it is our selection screen which we have already seen for parameters the first screen is for text symbols so if you see okay so that's that's about text symbols uh, you can practice the same. However, you have created for selection screen. You can practice the same for text symbols. You have already written the right statements. In those, you can do it. And initially, what are they doing here? They are declaring multiple variables. And initially, they are not assigning any values to it. So the initial values will always be zero because they haven't specified anything. Zero will be only there for numerical values because text is a char string it is not having any values so this they are specifying about the memory that is available for the variables so that means when the program starts the system automatically ensures that the memory is available for these variables whatever you define so that's why they ask us not to define unnecessary variables so we have checks we have some you know automatic checks or code note snippets that will you know ensure that okay these variables are not used anywhere but you have declared because they are consuming too much not too much space but they are consuming unnecessary space so to avoid that there will be this and the value we are not specifying the variables we are not specifying any values if you want to have a default or initial value however we have specified where constant we will use that particular value so this is what they are trying to explain here so here what they did was so this is a simple ABAP program so initially they are having all the values as zero and then this is how the program looks looks like this is not the output because they didn't write any right statement so they are saying like initially it will have all zeros you have given 30 and we are passing 30 so gv number two here it will not have anything once the statement is executed once the statement is executed that's when the value will be passed to it so here we have directly passed it so it is having 30 so here once this line is finished then it will be 30 so they are just simply explaining us how it is happening so these are the automatic operations like add one to gv decimal or you can even write it like gv decimal e equals to gv decimal plus one so it always adds one to it and clearing the variables we have also seen this clear statement i have shown you for clearing the work area so similar manner we can clear the variables if you want to perform a different activity and you don't want to have any garbage values or existing values to it that's why we use the clear statement clear statement is to ensure that the output or the garbage values doesn't exist in those variables so the they are trying to explain here about the abo program so as we have already seen what is happening over there i don't 
think this is complex but if you find any issue or if you want me to explain again let me know if not i'll go ahead this is clear like what is happening in this program this is a simple program so then i'll move to the next one now what they did here was instead of variables they have taken the parameters so this is what i was trying to tell you if you want to perform something uh, create an above program and do this it's a simple source code having two parameters of integer type and they want to perform some activity on those maybe we can try it in this manner we can have two variables we can have even a third variable and there you can you know give you a uh, arithmetic operation like plus into divided by symbol from your keyboard and then also we can perform it so in that case how you can perform is like in gv result this is the first parameter here you will give the second parameter what operation you have to perform and then we will give the third parameter here so it basically depends on what has to be done if not you can follow the same manner so this is basically giving the result how the values appear this is what it is trying to explain to us so what all operations we have are same addition subtraction multiplication and division so how else can we do it they are giving an example how these can be used as add we have seen like that we'll have sub and for multiplication also and division also division div multi so like that you will have so instead if you use the symbols it's quite easy and faster for us you can take any approach whichever is flexible for you so they are just explaining about the operators how we can use this one add subtract multi and divide so you can take whichever approach you want you can follow the same i guess uh, these are basically about the arithmetic operations and text symbols you can practice the text symbols because text symbols is something we sometimes use if we create a report it's similar to that if you want we'll do under the existing program if you are good i would go with the next lesson on system variables okay so the why they have taken the type p is like you're performing an arithmetic activity so that's why they have taken p so p means decimal it's okay if you take an integer also because the above two ones are integer you don't give a decimal so it's not necessary that it has always be a p it's based on the requirement so they want it to be in a decimal format so that's why they have taken it as p suppose you have taken two numbers and you have dividing it it's not necessary always the reminder will be a whole number it can be a decimal number so considering those factors they have taken the result as type p so what i want to explain now is about system variables and the uh, way we use and why we use so system variables are something that are belonging to the system itself whichever system you log in what is the id of the system what is the client of the system i have mentioned about mandate field which is client field which is 001 you can also identify it from system variables suppose in you you are in your code and you want to know where i am what is the you know when you are in a loop what is the index what is the you know tab tab value tab x we call it as tab x what is the tab index table index basically so where we are to understand all these we have an existing table in sap we call it as syst table in that syst table we have multiple values like what is the system time what is the system id all these values so those we can specify and identify so that's what we have specified here from that syst table if you want to find something and if you want to see the value we use it like psi psi is the indication of the table hyphen that field name datum is nothing but date and for time they use this use eit format and you want to see which user is using it then we call it as sci hyphen u name sci u name that means which user is performing this activity so if you enter the sci u name in uh, somewhere your code or something means it picks the system log on user so you, you have a variable called gv name and you give them at that sci u name it will automatically pick whoever logs in if you have variable date and if you give sci datum it will automatically pick the current date of that system and current time similarly all these variables are basically used mostly in real time purpose or this date and all so what they say is like if you are executing this particular performing activity pick that current date and time and add it 
somewhere in my or give the creation date and time in the table how will you give the creation date and time so to give the creation date and time you have to use the system variable so you pass the system date and time to that creation field of your table then it saves that particular value so this is how the system will there are so many other system variables which will be used across apart from the current date current time like i said you have something like f code f code means like what is the activity they are performing t code with transaction they are in we will if we go to that sysd table you could see the list of system fields so uh, i want to show you these fields and how we use we can take a report i was just trying to log on to this new okay it's still activating <clears throat> so in the meantime uh, you guys can open your report and um, however you are writing just write sayu name sayu z it and sai data you will see that your system I, id system date and system time will be displayed just write that one statement and check the output so the, these are all so we can see that there are 171 system fields out of the mostly used are those the date the time the user id and then um, the index so index and ta table index we use for our practice you know like in our reporting we use index to see which line it is there okay if it is this index it has to go to next index where it is to see the count all those okay so the first one is index which is nothing but in the loop which line you are in which loop you are in first time second time third time whatever it is so like that we have few more fields like page number tab box all these you know this is a field position what is the position of the field and the character where is it you know and in you have to find the what is the column what is the present column which you are using what is the column in that given list for that it is used db count is nothing but the total count the database table rows count for those we use this all these are the multiple system fields you know to i at the wherever the cursor position presently is so this is row position this is column position which row the cursor is all these like while debugging basically you'll try to see where i am what i'm using all this so there are too many variables like t zone is time zone not that every if you get some date and time it should not be same as your system time so what would be the time zone it is in so whichever system you have set the time zone that will so this will mostly by default be german time zone that is utc plus 5 utc i don't know what is plus india is plus 530 so something for them 330 or something i guess or 130 something let's not talk too much on that but yeah the t zone will be there here and uh, this is all all for like we don't have daylight saving but for other countries they have it so that's where it comes from you have calendar details this is the um, program if you are in a program the screen will be there that screen number and all so mostly now we are not using the screens and screen numbers anymore in any practice because we have moved to ui and this web dime through ui gui screens not we're not working on abap screens even the customers are not performing so that's an old legacy code this is a field for client all these are the multiple fields so these are uh, different fields which can be used see here we have the time here we have the username there are so many so many fields like the program which program which is the program that is being called which is the program that is being used internally all this these are the messages we will learn about the error messages we are getting the messages while we are working on reports or somewhere right so those will be picked up from a message class so what are those ids what is that message type whether it's an error or warning or whatever it is all those variables will also be saved so these are the different ones so these are the ones which we use this this is host is like the application server which we are on so we have heard like three layers right database application so host will give you the application layer details so you can have a look at the system fields in your report you can try add the system fields and see you can or else you can write you can try to find what are all there you can just give the variable name and it will identify 
have you tried using that sci hyphen write the statement and see how the value looks like i'll also show you in debugging but were you able to see So if you want to know what data type it belongs to, go to SYST table you, using control F. Uh, if you do that, you can find it. You can find the U name and see the component type. It will have a data type and length. You can pick the same. Uh, there is a space missing above. Just give the space after that equals to and before the equals to. If not, it would give us error. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now you can. Oh, no, not enhancements. So enhancements, we don't use it here. OK. So shall we start? So I would say like this is most important topic. I will try to cover as much as possible. And even tomorrow for some time, I will explain about this. So why? Because See, we'll all write reports, we'll find errors, we'll fix it. But sometimes the output would not work as expected, even though our code syntax is totally correct. Looking at the code, sometimes we'll not able to identify what is the error happening. So that we'll only understand, you know, if we go and see whether at each level, each point of time, whether that line of code is doing whatever we're doing. So debugging is a generic language in any coding so how we do it in ABAP is what we will see now. So there are so many activities in ABAP. Uh, so how we can go to debugger is via breakpoint that we keep at our code or else directly also. So this is an important tool asset to analyze our programs, to understand our programs. If you have a new program, it is giving an output, but you don't know what why is it giving it that output? How it is getting that output? Maybe some complex calculation is that using this debugging tool, you can understand step by step what calculation is performed, how it is performing. So you can execute line by line also in the debugger and you can see what is happening. So to use debugger, you first decide, yeah, keeping the breakpoint basically where you want to keep, from where you want to check. So how we can start. So one activity is we have direct execution. So similar manner, if you want to start your program from the starting itself with the debugging, then you will click on debugging. This is an SC38 screen. In the first screen, how we have acti activate, execute, and so on. We also have debugging on the first screen itself. The other activity is keeping a break point on your screen. If you have certain lines of code and if you want to keep an breakpoint, I will on oh, I can't open a program. Let me see if I have This I have access, I'll show you how we have it. So this is what it is meant by debugging. So this is what it meant by debugging. So either you can directly click on this or even from here, we can go to program. No, sorry. Even from, I want to show you the breakpoint first. So here, if I want to see what is happening here, just click on this. It will by default create a session breakpoint. That means that will be applicable for that session, whichever time. Suppose you, if I close my uh, system, if I log off, then it will not be applicable. So if I have external breakpoint, that means it will be available for two hours for my user across. So either you can directly click on this or come to this line select this one and do it. So if you are in the screen and if you're performing, you again, do no need to go to, you know, edit and uh, you know, debug from the starting. So I'm not giving anything. And if I try to execute now, it will stop at the point where I have placed my first breakpoint. 
see i have kept my first breakpoint here so now i want to see why my output how my output is working so there is no value so what we basically do is like once you come into the screen it this arrow mark shows you at which line the code is running now and the existing variables uh, if they are declared variables and if it already has been declared then you can just double click i'm just going keeping my cursor on it and double clicking it it shows you the values so why that work area person first name is not having a value here means i haven't fill the parameter at, at all so the parameter is blank that's why it is taking blank value and if i click on this is something called single step so it will go to next step each step execution so this is where we use this for each step it moves next it moves next that's why that's how it happens so f6 is also like f6 is basically used if you want to skip some function module so suppose uh, there is a big code and i have written it somewhere else and i have called my code here and i know that it is giving perfect output and i don't want to see what is happening inside that's when i use f6 only to uh, execute such kind of function such kind of classes such kind of internal code but if i click on f5 during that time it will go inside and execute each and every step so f6 will execute that particular complete line it will not go inside and do so we have other f7 so that means it covers whichever session you are in it comes out of it just out of it so if it if you have if you have a next set of code it will go to that next set that means it will come out of this particular code and go to next whereas f8 the next transaction continue will completely come out of your debugger until and unless you don't have a next debugger set suppose if i do an f8 here i'm just clicking on this it is going to next line because i have a breakpoint if i don't have a breakpoint then it will come out so now that i have the mobile number filled i want to see so i'll go here double click on it so you could see that this value has been passed to this we are at the second line but you can't double click on these hard coded values it won't give you anything i am clicking but it won't give you anything so okay now work area phone so i i want to see the complete structure double click on it and see there are two fields and you can see one value is filled the other value is not filled this is how it works suppose if i want to see this one this is a deep structure that means inside this it again have the structure of address and then the phone is a table so what we'll do we'll again navigate to this particular value if there is some value then that will be displayed so here if i want to see this one so there are no entries so if i do if i perform this activity then i can see there is one entry so similarly if i go to the structure if i want the deep structure this is where i'll click and this is where i will see the values this is how we will see if we want to clear these variables then i'll click on delete and then it will show whatever the value is so can you see system variables already on the screen yes we do so on top of the screen we can see yeah sorry is someone trying to talk okay so what does size of rc means the line which you have executed was it successful has it caused any errors or didn't work as expected until the time size of rc is zero it is well and good you can proceed next when size of rc is 4 or 8 that means there are some errors caused or it is not giving the output as expected whereas size tab x means the table index we are not having a loop table here we are having only one so that's why the site abix is being always one not only just there i can also see my say your name here the username or the site date here or even the size of basi again here it's okay you can give 
all your system variables and you can check it from here. So let me come to this loop. Suppose you are in debugger, you didn't keep a breakpoint and you want to keep a breakpoint when you are inside the debugger. Even in that scenario, we can do it. So how I'll do it is like I'll come and I'll directly click on that or else I'll come here and I can click on this, which creates a breakpoint immediately in your debugging screen. This is what the debugging screen looks like. And this is how I can keep a breakpoint. Now, if I do an F8, it will come and stop at this particular point. So I'm doing an F5. So it will be there here. Here you can see Psi index. So it starts with zero from above. The next one, now the tabix has become two. Initially, it was one because inside the loop, the table contents has become two. This is only one structure, so the index is not being modified. If it is a tabler, then we have chances that it would be modified. So the complete lines were executed, so that's why it is out. So now what I will do is like, I'll remove all other breakpoints. You can click on it or you can right click and delete it. No, psi index is uh, if you have a table or index and if you want to identify uh, then we will have this table index so whether uh, it is in that loop whether the index will be declared if you have you know the loop inside the loop so here we will be considering only um, the index is like wherever the line of code it is you know um, I will explain you the index on another loop where you have tabular indexes and all. So that's when, whether you are at first one, whether you are at second one, that's when that psi index can be used. Okay. Uh, so we have seen the variables now. So I have shown you the first F5 singular ex execution. If I do F7 here, as we don't have another report, it is coming out of the program. F8 also will do the same thing. But F7, if you have two sets of codes, in that case, again, F7 will be like going to the next set of code. Okay. So this is a simpler explanation of this code. Uh, we can see this even in other activities where we have select queries, how it works and all. Okay, let me show the select, then we will get back to our slides and see whatever is there. If we have missed something, then we'll again come and see because this is easier to understand. Okay, why I am mostly concentrating on this is like debugging is an important activity to understand what we have missed in our program. If we write a program, if we go to someone, it's not easy to understand it quick. But if we do a debugging, we ourselves can easily find it. So don't miss the debugging part practice the debugging but if you want write errors in your program errors means not syntax errors write something and check how debugging helps you to identify it okay so now let's do from this screen so this debugging will start if we have a selection screen it starts debugging even before the selection screen so so this is going even before the selection screen. So that is getting the parameter values. I have specified some parameters. This is the standard code. So anything that starts like this without Z, this is standard code. So this is basically standard code. That's why I did an F8 and I came to selection screen. So in that it is basically trying to fetch the list of parameters that were existing. So there is one parameter that is existing and it picked that particular parameter. So if I want, I don't have a debugging screen, but after the selection screen, if I want to perform debugging, there is one transaction that which you have to enter that is backslash H. Remember this, this will be helpful if we have to perform debugging suddenly anywhere on a screen. And if you want to understand why we are getting errors, what is happening on that screen, you're not able to follow it, then this is the code that helps you giving backslash H and execution will directly take you to the debugging screen. So debugging is switched on across the screen. And if you execute it, it will first go and stop at the starting of the execution point. See, so 
there are certain types of tabs here. Standard. Standard will have which screen you are in, which event you are in, and followed by variables. If you don't want to see the screen details, you can come to desktop three directly. You will only can see what variables you want to enter, what all you want to enter here. So these are the existing ones. We have declared it here, so that's why it is up visible to us globally, globally for this report only, not outside the report. If you try this outside the report, you can't see this. So locals or whatever you declare in the includes or somewhere in this. So that's how we have other details also. Basically, we don't use these much, but you use the variables and all these. If there is some use case that there are some activities that were executed before this, there were some other reports. Suppose you have a sequence of reports and if we want to see it, which which report I am, when is this report being called or when is some class being called? Is there anything in between or sequence, the sequence of steps, then we will come to this ABAB screen and we will see. So we will see that this is at the second stack level. So that means it's just a second. If we go into a different program as a continuation to this, we will see it one above the other. So however you want, whichever way is comfortable in that manner, you will set these, whether you want to go for desktop one, two, three. For me, it's desktop two, three, which is comfortable. So I prefer using desktop three approach and then I will set the breakpoint as I need. So these are the other activities. So if you have any structure which you have selected in the variable, all these details will be displayed over here. Whichever variable you have selected, you can see it here. But the quicker approach is like we'll directly go click on it and then we can see it here. So now this is where we perform the activity. So now you see the size of us is zero. Suppose for a, a thing that there are entries and then if you act, activate this or execute this particular step, my size of us is zero means yes, it has picked some value. So what I'll do, I'll double click on this LS flight. As it is a structure, it is not showing me the complete values. I can come and see what all values it has displayed. Okay, so as it is filled, it has fill all those values as it is work area it will pick only one value i can directly give a field name if i know here if not i can directly click from here as i have already selected this let me select the second value so this is how it works for the work area only single row it has fetched only single row so far so that's why we are able to see that particular one so end select is again checking whether the select statement has run uh, whether so there are multiple values right there are n number of entries so with this select end select it will check all if there are four values it will give you only one but it will go and keep on checking until if there are 17 entries the select and select works if we write an exit statement here once it fetches it just comes out if not it will execute 17 times or like how many ever entries we have those many times and now we are checking the next select statement which is for table so this is how we see the table so there are six entries so that's why the select statement has been executed six times if we write an exit statement then it would have come out in the first first it is like a loop itself it works like a loop itself and it would have come out so LT flight, let's see what are the six entries. These are the six entries that are available. And you could see all the values, which field, if any field is not having a value, you could see that payment sum and all are blank. You can compare it with a table. Anyway, we are doing a direct select query, so it is not affecting. If you have a where condition and if it is performing as per that where condition or not, you can check that generally will not get so simple where conditions we will be having interdependent where conditions so that's where we write multiple where statements where this carrier id satisfies the parameter and they would say like the time should be within this time zone and you will write a statement like and what is the time zone and so many other activities so these we will be learning in our future classes but for now we will go with the existing one 
so if you see this ls flight again we'll see what are the values it is having so it has the date as 2017 12 2020 so let's see which row it belongs to can you already assume which it would be that is the sixth row in work area why it is the sixth value and why it is not the first value so what happened was it has when it has executed between the select and then select six times so every time it is switching a new value and overwriting it with a new value so that's why it picked us the sixth value in case if you want the first all always when we write a select and select means we always assume that we want the first value so we will write an exit statement that means if it satisfies and finds one value just come out of the select and give that value that's how we write so that's the reason because it it went like a loop it has taken it so many times so here we have only taken these set of fields in lt flight So, but these were the existing fields. So it picks based on the LT flight type. So that's why it didn't pick other values. So I, I will show you what it does for the next statement. We are not even having any where condition for this. So it has picked everything. If you see now here we have seat, payment, all those, all those are there. Why? Because whatever we have selected, here that means all fields is in line with the number of fields in this table whereas in this scenario i have picked randomly only few fields but it is not in line with this table fields so that's why all these fields became blank because the fields whatever are here and the fields whatever i have selected are not same I have only selected till plain type. So that's why it has filled only till plain type. So if you are planning to fill only till plain, plain type, then my LT flight should also be a table type declaration where I declare only till plain type. Whereas LT flight, I fetched everything. That's why everything is filled. Or uh, did you get the difference between these two? Why it is filled and why it is not filled? Okay, good. So that is the difference. So these are the things which we will be able to identify. Suppose think you have written a select statement like this. Okay, until plain type. But you are trying to fetch in the next statement how many seats are occupied. So what you will do, you will be thinking that LT flight you have declared as seat with a table type so seat max field is also there it will not give you an error if you are passing it it will allow you to do but in select statement you have missed it so you will get it as zero so if you want to identify why such errors have happened in that case we will perform the activity like this so then you will it is easy for you to identify okay in my select query i didn't fetch it so that's why this lt flight is not filled try this do this so try to give that lt you know other fields which are not existing and you will see so here lt payment sum is zero whereas here oh i have taken the same so he with the second time it will be filled if we see so this will be executed six times but this is for 94 times for the first time it is a i'll come to this so initially the payment sum was zero if you notice second time the payment sum was there so this is what i was trying to say to identify why it is filled here oh sorry filled here and why it is not filled here it is basically because of our select statement these kind of things you can identify using the debugger. So this is how it works. So let's get back and see what else they have mentioned for us in this slide. The first point is at which line we are keeping the breakpoint that we have seen. The other one is in from selection screen using backslash it you can also directly go to the debugger screen and you can execute so this is what they have mentioned about how we can activate our debugger from the screen or you know you can activate from the starting of the debugger so they are also explaining how else you can perform this this is 
basic explanation of that. So we have seen that LO mark that specifies where we have it and how we can get the variables is by double clicking on those variables. So we have seen how we can analyze the code once the debugger starts. So in the debugger, based on the placing break, either by placing breakpoint or by starting the debugger from the starting user, if you don't have a selection screen, you know, then it directly goes to the code. If you have a selection screen, then it goes to selection screen. That's when you again have to set the debugging using backslash H, or if you have a breakpoint, then you can directly execute it. That is what we were trying to explain in the above code above lines okay so here we are explaining whether you want to so we have a function keys for this single step is f5 and the execution of complete line is without going deep into the line is f6 f7 returns returns to the next set of code whereas f8 continues it comes out completely out of that until and unless it finds next debugger or next stop point. You know, uh, we also used to write instead of placing a breakpoint, we we can we have a keyword called breakpoint, but we are not supposed to use breakpoint in real time usage. That breakpoint keyword is not for real time usage. But we have a breakpoint if you want someone wants to see. I guess in have in all legacy codes we still have that written, but it's not a good practice. So this is what we are explaining about you know breakpoints continue. So we will also learn about watch points uh, later. Firstly, we'll finish about the breakpoints. This would be easy to understand. We'll learn about what watch points at the end. So how else can we keep the breakpoints? Either we'll have the buttons directly or we can keep it somewhere. We have other activities where we can keep the place the breakpoints like this, you know, breakpoint at a particular statement. If we have function module, if you know the function module name, but you can't see it in a huge report, then you will select the breakpoint at a function module and give the function module name. If you already know the line of code using source code ex extract all those so you will see the breakpoints of web time through and reminding things later when we learn about message class when we will understand that you can even keep a breakpoint at messages so breakpoints can be kept at any statement which is executable on comments you can't keep a breakpoint so the comment the breakpoints are always kept on any executable line of code so they have mentioned the same types of breakpoints, where you can keep, how you can use and all. So um, if you have some additional breakpoints, I have told you that the continue will come and stop at that breakpoint. So you can divide that and you can see where else we can use it. You practice the debugging using breakpoints and all, you will understand how else you can check it. So, coming to watch points, watch points are basically used for variables. So, if you know that this variable will have this value in future, that means if you are looping a big table and you want to see only at this particular value, I want to see what is happening. So, then you will create this watch point on that particular table for that program saying like for this variable in this program stop when it reaches this condition so i will so here you will mention the variable name what is the variable you want to check you want to check the value of this variable and you want to stop at that particular point of time so that's why we call it as watch point so where is that variable available that variable is available in the program level so we have types of watch point whether we want to monitor that variable during the program when the value is available or the object during the program when the program is stopped and reaches an attribute like the selection attributes and all when the object itself is changed is that point when we want to say that we will be selecting here and this is where we write the condition like when my value is equals to this value that's when i want to see the i want to see the code or i want the debugger to start then we'll create the watch point and debugger if you click on continue the debugger will stop at 
that point of time. So that's what they were mentioning about these watch points. These watch points are like break points, but not like you specify them with the break point, but with the code value. So break points are for one line of code or one keyword on statement, on message class, on function modules. But whereas watch points are saying like, keep an eye on this variable and uh, stop it when the variable changes to this particular value, whichever value you provide. That's when the watch point will stop at that particular point of time. So we have seen that how the variable screen appears. We'll also practice the watch point in our exercise. So they are mentioning the way on how to create the watch point. So we have already seen like we have a name variable and we will give the name variable and uh, it will identify if you give a wrong variable and click on enter, it will say like the variable does not exist. Watch point cannot be created. So as said, watch points are useful when you are debugging a complex program because the contents of that variable would be changing too frequently and you don't want to wait and see at each level and you want to only see one specific value. So with this watch points, as I just said, you can avoid stepping through code line, each line at a time. Imagine your value is a 10,000 record. Do you really want to execute all that 9? thousand nine and all those records no right we'll keep a watch point it will directly go and stop at the ten thousand record so watch points also plays a major role while you are debugging your screen hey there are you ready to dive into the world of sap abap our self-paced course on our platform is your ticket to mastering this essential skill in this course you'll unlock the secrets of sap abap the language behind customizing sap applications Think of it as your toolkit for making SAP do exactly what you need it to do. Our curriculum covers everything from the basics to advanced techniques, crafted by seasoned experts who know the ins and outs of SAP ABAP like the back of their hand. Meet your instructor, a seasoned pro in the world of SAP, ready to guide you through every step of your learning journey and answer any questions you might have. But don't just take our word for it. Hear it from our satisfied students. They found our course invaluable in their journey to SAP mastery. And the best part, it's all at a price that won't break the bank. Quality training shouldn't come with a hefty price tag, and we've made sure of that. So, are you ready to level up your SAP skills? Don't miss out. Sign up now on our Teachable course page. And for more information, visit Zarin Tech's website below for full details on the training curriculum and formats.